The views expressed on this Turnbuckle Tabloid live stream or Turnbuckle Tabloid podcast episode do not reflect the views, thoughts, or opinions of the RageWorks brand, including the RageWorks podcast network, RageWorks content partners, advertisers, and affiliates. Viewer and listener discretion is advised. What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Jay the Red Santee, and just want to let you know that Yes, Olski and I have finally caved in. We've got us up a Patreon. Yes, Turnbuckle Tabloid has a Patreon. Patreon.com forward slash Turnbuckle Tabloid. We've done it. We said, fuck it. If you guys want to be a part of the show a little bit deeper, more in, more in depth, in, in, intense, uh, get more involved in the behind the scenes and be a part of the show in a more intimate and sensuous ways. Why not pay for it? Go to Turnbuckle Tabloid's Patreon at patreon.com forward slash Turnbuckle Tabloid. You guys can be a part of it. Check out the tiers. Things that might be able to fit your needs when it comes to us here at Turnbuckle Tabloid. So guys, please help us out here. It helps us to build the product, better audio, better apps, better programs, and of course, helps us to build us to be a better podcast, although we're awesome as is but still regardless your 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 contribution your contributions your shillings your 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 bits of change could help us to grow here at turnbuckle tabloid so once again patreon.com forward slash turnbuckle tabloid be a part of the extravaganza and the ridiculous and buffoonery that is turnbuckle tabloid join us on social media and as well as all the podcasting outlets and as always enjoy the show It's the Nature Boy, Ric Flair. Woo! When I'm not styling that profile and I'm listening to them boys on Turbuckle Tower. Follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and on Twitter. And make sure you listen to them on all those podcasting outlets like iHeartRadio, Spotify, iTunes, and everything you listen to your podcast. Woo! Turnbuckle Tabloid. Three, two, one. I could be, like I said, I could be a real fucking asshole. Honestly. I, I'm, I'm getting there, bro. Honestly. <laughs> I'm really getting it's, there. Like, I don't it's care. simple for me to turn to somebody and says, listen, we're not, we're, it's not, it's not working here anymore. Right. Uh, you're, you don't fit in the this. criteria. <laughs> we don't fit in this circle. We got to, um. We hope you work better in other places. In a different apparently circle. This, this is not you here. It's not your circle. Yeah. But. It's well, well, people always say nothing's worse than having to fire somebody. I don't know about that. I don't know. Because if you're really not doing your job, I got to tell you what up. Get the fuck out. I, the whole point is I know everybody wants, uh, everybody needs to work. They need money. They have to, you know, they have to. Uh, That's what uh, she's upset about. She's like, well, everyone's craving for money. So like. Yeah, but if I'm you're not doing your fucking job, then you should get the fuck out. Yeah, and she's not, bro. If you're not, not pulling your weight, then you gotta go. That means you don't appreciate that. You don't. You appreciate the work. I'll take me quickly. You know, I, I gotta be honest with you. I got I, I, when it when it comes to my job, I kind of I don't come in on time. <laughs> <laughs> I don't come in on time. Right. You know, right. I, I, maybe I come in a half hour, 40, 40 minutes late, whatever the case may be. Fuck it. But at the end of the day, when I'm in the building, they know I'm doing my job. Right. And if you you pull me to the side, oh, this is Santi. Uh, uh, Who we doing here, fam? Yeah, yeah, you're, you're a great worker, but you're not coming in on time. I'm like, all right, all right. So I start Has coming in. Has someone done that yet? Um, yeah, a couple of times. And when then I, I change up my um my my pattern, I like a month or two, I, I go, I start going in on time and shit. Mm-hmm. Then it goes back to the old routine. <laughs> I mean, come on. But other than that, <laughs> I, I for a run. month. They go back to that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, get comfortable. But <laughs> but other than that, it's, listen, if you're not in the work environment and and. If you're, if you're not in the work environment And you're not If you're in the work environment You're not pulling the weight That you should be pulling Right And you're being an asshole Because you're a fucking entitled prick Or whatever Yep Alright get the fuck out of here I would love to put you on the oh. fucking On the pedestal And be like yeah you got to go Believe me one time I was I was thrown attitude my way And it was straight up I looked at her and I was like You looking, you talking to me like that 
and she ignored it, and I was like, okay. That's probably the toughest sure. you ever felt in your life, yes, right? Of course. <laughs> Cause I'm, I hate confrontation, but like she she threw me off the rails and I almost went off. Like, what son? What? You said what? What? What son? Oh well, one time she spoke under her breath. Oh. And, and one time she was like, "This is why I hate this place." And I'm like, "What?" <laughs> she goes, "This is why I hate this place." And I'm like, "Then leave." In the middle of kids and everything, I'm like, "Then leave." You don't want to be here? Go. I was like, "I don't want to hear you under your breath, shit." Period. Like, get the fuck out of here. I don't want to hear that nonsense. Like. We're, the, with, no, the, the you know, etiquette, you're getting paid. Etiquette, etiquette would have told you, would have said to you, what you should have done with, was taking the employee, the underling, and pull him to the side. I said, this is not the kind of environment that needs hostility, especially when it's like, no, if you don't like it, get the fuck out. Get you out, man. Get out. <laughs> like, uh, I'll get a replacement right now. Like my patients, I'll cover for you while you get the fuck out. I told, I told my my superior, I was like, yo, we'd be better off with understaff than what we're doing yeah, right, right now. Sometimes that is the case. Like, honestly, I feel like we would get our job done when way you're understaff, better when you're than with, with, that, with the missing link here, yeah. you know? And it's not just me. It's everybody. It's everybody. It's not just me. Everybody has the same agreement. It's like the Avengers like going against Loki. We all know <laughs> Who what's the, going down? What's going down? So uh, you know, but like I said, it pays well. The hours are great. Cannot complain. So now, uh, shout out to you who's uh, finally getting the taste of what full time work. Is. You know, I'm, 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 I'm at six o'clock every morning, bro. It fucking sucks. <laughs> uh, my, my bedtime's gone to eleven thirty. Oh, oh like, boo! Uh, what is it? For, what is it that Artie used to do on Howard Stern? I gotta wake up early. Which, I'm getting paid to get to work. Which, which to this day, to this day, I I still never understood the magic of already waking up that early in the morning, every single morning doing the the show. Yeah, that's why his ass was on Subutex for a long time. Yeah, yeah they honestly, fucking power like, uh, and then sometimes he fell asleep. Exactly. <laughs> it was, yeah, I just uh, every time I watched Howard Stern, I was like, how the hell did Artie wake up this morning? <laughs> I want to know how he got. And out he of was bed. a party guy. Yeah. Like, so I don't. I don't. I want to know how he got out of bed at that every morning. And hey, listen, you got to do what you got to listen. For me, I work in shifts. So yep. And the shifts that I work, it's at night. <laughs> at night. <laughs> at night. Sometimes it's 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 it's. Oh, it, and now I'm starting to do some OTs here and there. Right. But you know, you pull through it, and then. You get these sporadic sleep schedules. You sleep for four hours here, three hours there. You and figure it out. You just get used to it, man. Yeah. I've been, I, I, the, the, the good thing about me is I've, I've pretty much been a night owl since I was a teenager anyway. Right. So I used it, to put overnight as a, as, a, as a teenager anyway. So right. so it's not new, new, a new adjustment. I would fucking be up all night, go to school, and fucking fall asleep through one or two And know what class to fall asleep in. <laughs> no, seriously. I would wow. be in high school and know what class because I knew the teacher wouldn't bother me because they knew I was getting the work done. Anyway, and I was so. and I was, right. and, and I was getting a grade. Well, that was the and idea. I, That's the key with school. And I had stud- I had other students who turned to me and was like, "How are you passing with a ninety? And you're fucking sleeping during the class?" Because I do my work. I know yeah. what. The- I- I'm already f- pressed when I go in there. But you right. know why? Because when I'm at the house playing Genesis, I'm also listening to or being a part or reading up on shit on the schoolwork. Right, right. So I could go in there. <sighs> Yo, there was a teacher one time. I went in. I swear to God, and my cousin Lou could fucking verify this. The first test I took in that class, I scored 115. <laughs> How the fuck is that possible? Was I got credit. I not only not only did I get every. It was a social studies class, not on a or global history is what they were to call it in high school. Not only did I get everything right, the extra, the extra, the bonus question. Oh God! I wrote like fucking three. Paragraphs about it, oh, and my. brought up stuff that she didn't even know wow. was there. What she wrote on the front, like holy shit! <laughs> <laughs> like, did she did she write? I didn't even know this Yo, shit. Yo, I huh? swear to you, she came up to me, and y'all tell you, Luke can tell you. She, <laughs> he says she came up to me. She goes, she put. Actually, she gave the test to everybody, and I looked at the score. I was like. And, and you know, I was arrogant, and I was like, "Yeah, I see that." Like, I, I it, you know, sometimes you see, you be like, "Oh shit, what?" Right. So right. I was, I said, "I was like, yeah, all right, all right." And she literally leaned over to me, and whispered in my ear, and said, "You never have to do anything in this class ever again. Wow. Just make sure you're here." Wow, and did that's you, it. You never have to take a test again. Nope. Nope. What I used to do was, holy since shit, since Lou was in my class, yeah, I would take the test for him. I would take. I would get his paper and I would do okay, it. Okay, social studies buff. Yeah, Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I would sit there and I, and I would do his test. And in, in math, he, he would do the same for me. Like he would, because I'm, right. listen, I'm, not I'm a genius, math. but math is my, 
I, I suck. I only, I've always sucked at math. I only count money. I'm only, yeah, I only count money, money, not fucking equations. But um, I would do the same thing. We'll sit. He will sit behind me, and right. I would switch papers with him, and he'll take the math test with me, and then flip it back around and shit. So let me ask you. Uh, I'm gonna take a wild guess that you are um, your favorite subject was social studies. No, I, my my favorite subject was um, pretty much everything. I was pretty good at everything. You could open the door. That's my, my my favorite subject was pretty much everything. Um, I was a big fan of English more than anything. I loved just I like to this day. You hear me talking shit. I'm more of a linguistic kind of guy and shit like that. So pretty much my my whole high school years were were covered by. Uh, Thinking that I was, or knowing that I was smarter than the fucking teachers. Yo, the teacher that I spoke about from from Global History, she was actually a drunk. So I got over wow. with that. All shit. right, <laughs> That's why I got to wait. Wow. Right, right, right. But yeah, English was like was my 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 strongest subject. I, I loved English, language arts, and all that shit. That was my thing. Yeah, I was, shit. In high school, I was a theater major in there. So my favorite uh, class in high school was definitely forensic science. What? <laughs> <laughs> Shut up <laughs> Saw your mics on The will is in the building Ladies and gentlemen Will We'll which, put you on later By the way Red uh, I never asked What was like your most um, um, You did shows right in Yeah, theater, dude, yeah. What, was your, what was your 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 favorite That you did You did You were most proud Of your performance I did um, There was a, a A play that My drama teacher He Wrote himself It was about Nat Turner Okay It was a, a Story about a a slave who revolted against plantation owners and such. It's a mm-hmm. big, they actually made a movie about it a couple of years ago. And um, come to happen, you got this high yellow Puerto Rican to play Nat Turner. Wow. All right. Man, Winning works. the lead role. Listen, I, the yo, lead role. not for nothing, but the, that was the, the, like, the biggest highlight of my fucking theatrical career where I, I was sat in a room of 60, 70 people wow. and did a, a six page monologue that was maybe about 10, 15 minutes long where I, I basically I did a sermon for other uh, slaves right, and had people crying. Wow. Literally, I, 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 literally I had people crying. The, the best part about it was he did the play with older uh, actors with adults, uh-huh. and when he had, uh, when he had, uh, um, I guess, I, I directed them. It took them maybe about two and a half, three months to learn that monologue. Right. Where with me, I did it in three and a half weeks. Wow. Okay. And okay. I was, I, I was, I was surprised by it. But listen, I was young. I, but the best part about it was, I was such a fucking pothead. I was surprised I even remember that <laughs> shit. Anyway, so. I wouldn't. Have. <laughs> A big fucking party, but yeah, it <laughs> to was, be or not to be. Oh shit, wrong show. Um, <laughs> yeah, but other than that, it was it, it, that that was the highlight of, of of my acting. I did other bullshit like I've been on extras and movies. And someone shit like told that, me you were um the cowardly lion in the Wizard of Oz. That was in uh, no 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 in third grade. I wanted to be the scarecrow. Oh come but on! But they sh- they moved me down to a, a munchkin. What you got the munchkin? <sighs> I wasn't no. tall. I wasn't tall enough to be this the scarecrow. Really? And, and he's the scarecrow supposed to be that tall? I mean, I, I, I mean, guess. I and I mean, all I wanted was one line, which was, and that's all it was. It was, and the wizard would give me a brain. <laughs> I wanted that line so bad. <laughs> I mean, I feel like you pull the cowardly line off great, though. You you would sing I the, would have you would sing the fuck out of the kid um, if I they would have you would pull that off though one of my one of my um, classmates was kind of looked like you my boy um, John Paul Montez he kind of had that look like you but he was Puerto Rican right. and he was he was portly yeah and he was the cowardly lion I think that's the best I think that's the best role to get cast with, in that I movie, was the king of the forest. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's. I'm a, I, I'm a, oh, sorry. Let me put your mic on. I'm a Tin Man fan. I think the Tin Man. I would have thought that you wow. would have been a yes, Tin Man yes, as well. That makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Explain that. I'd because be fuck you if, uh, otherwise. <laughs> I, I, I would be Toto. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would be Dorothy. And then I'd be Dorothy. Bitch. I would look fabulous. Uh, I want the red slippers. Can uh, you imagine? Uh, <laughs> Will would have turned around. I would have be a flying monkey. <laughs> 
knowing me they probably throw me the tree who throws the apples at them and shit or maybe like oh, 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 or no, 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 that or like uh, we welcome you to the lollipop guild that's the lollipop a, guild <laughs> oh no this is know. a wrestling show right yeah but yeah but you know the opening salvo listen always I always drippy. I go into opening salvo I type into my fucking phone memos and I go this is what I want to talk about and, it goes off. and we always go all the way we always go it's off the rails it's salvo though but other than that welcome everybody Everybody to another episode of Turnbuckle Tabloid. I am your host, Mr. Ear to the Mat, the cheap, the, the cheap thrill, and the king of talk style, Jada Red Santa. And I am the Mook with the mic, Matoski. And this week we have the Will sitting in with us for a Will. little bit. The Will. I want to die. Wow. Make sure you check us out on all <laughs> make sure you check us out on all social media outlets. Check us out on the like group page on Facebook. Also check us out on the Instagram at Turnbuckle Tabloid as well as on t- oh excuse me. A Turnbuckle podcast. Tabloid Podcast. <laughs> I want to die. <laughs> <laughs> Turnbuckle Tabloid Podcast Also make sure you check us out on Twitter at Turnbuckle Tab Be sure you check us out on YouTube at Turnbuckle Tabloid As well as on Anchor And also on uh, Get Vocal Where we are at Turnbuckle Tabloid as well And be sure you get us on our Patreon At patreon.com Forward slash Turnbuckle Tabloid Yes um, Let's just put it up there I know You, you want to mo- see me new? I know you motherfuckers ain't gonna <laughs> fucking pay for shit anyway uh, so. and Actually uh, I wanted to make the announcement with you But um, I made us an OnlyFans oh, Really? If you want to watch us watch. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna do an episode of Turnbuckle Tabloid Naked, naked. <laughs> Butt naked Like in the chair and everything Like yeah. butt naked As a matter of fact We'll give you money So that we don't have to be <laughs> we naked We don't have to be naked <laughs> we'll, I was thinking, we'll reverse it I was thinking like A watch party of us in the nude For five dollars <laughs> You know You know what I'm saying we'll Make it work Yeah you know You wanna see me in that shirt you know, my that pe- tight my, shirt that my, I was my, my dick pic uh, company well closed, you can say so. shit like now cause now that you lost the weight you can see your fucking dick now finally it's, a, it took about, yeah. it's about time yeah, it's about time so open, open the, the cave the cave is opened up yeah, yeah, uh, exactly um, it's like shit it's like ladies he's available eh. only fans it's like what like two ninety nine a month <laughs> It's a, it's a, some of these ladies be charging like twenty five. I never use OnlyFans, but twenty five. It's bad. There's a UFC fighter who's charging like sixty dollars a month to do what? Exclusive content. Uh, bikini pics. What? Uh, oh hell no! It's called um, Pornhub. Are uh, we are we supposed free. to be in a, in a fucking recession and these motherfuckers is paying for this shit? I, I guess. I don't get it. Wow, I guess fucking unemployment is paying well for some people. Oh, I, Fuck. An old an old classmate from high school charges fifty dollars a month to get exclusive videos of 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 shit that I can't even say on this show. It is yes, you can. Naked oh, sure. boys. <laughs> sure. Say, say it. Naked sure. boys. No, she puts dog food in her cooch and it makes her dog eat it. <laughs> Bad. It's <laughs> fabulous. And people buy it. No, that they should. That's Ooh. a prime product, sir. Are you kidding That's me? Crime. That's a crime. <laughs> Only in, in in places with in like land. rational laws. Like the states. That is like just the uh, like. States is a crime. I think one of the videos. I think just don't report her. Don't say her name because I'm, I no, want I'm her, not. her good work to go on unpunished. <laughs> Willis, like that's disgusting. What's her name again? <laughs> <laughs> that's that's deplorable. Um, how much again? Uh, I'm getting oh paid this week. God. I thought that was exclusive to Russia. <laughs> um, no, no. Only fans. Just, and then and then like the gamers. Like if you want to see me beat some game, it's like okay. Now you're now you're blowing it for me. But oh Russia shit. And Brazil. Oh Jesus it's Christ! Just, it's just a mess, OnlyFans. Uh, make sure you check us out all the podcasting outlets. Make sure you check us out on iHeart, Spotify, Google Play, Google Play uh, uh, Podcast. Uh, we're everywhere now. We on Amazon Music. You thankfully. are lost for words right now. You're Holy like... shit! Oh my God! He said <laughs> you know she what the puts dog food. He's imagining it. <laughs> yeah. So is everybody who's hearing and this. He, and, and, and if you hear and his they words, they only do that in Germany. <laughs> like, I'm like I'm like what? Oh, no, they do. I've seen it. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I'm happy. That's it. That would be illegal. It's, it's amazing. Yeah, no, it's 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 unbelievable. What's she have like a German Shepherd? Like what the pitbull? <laughs> oh my god! I haven't seen the video. I, I haven't seen the videos. But I'm but but I've heard what they are, and it's not fun. <laughs> it's not good. So we don't have an OnlyFans. And, and now I got AJ hey. excited. He's barking in the background for it. <laughs> 
Oh my god, I, I am telling you, I, it's it's. When you get when you get the four of us in it, because Isaac just walked in the room. That punk Isaac just came out. Yeah. Isaac Rodriguez just walked in the building. Rodriguez. That's why. That's why. Um, the dog barking was happening. Yeah, we're we get the four cuts, ladies and gentlemen. We're having. Yeah, it's gonna be cuts here and there, but. Um, I got hammered. Are you? Close. Close. <laughs> wow. Speaking of hammering, listen. What? As we segue, <laughs> as we segue to apparently the How hammer does that change uh, the, the the hammering that's going on in which you know although this is a wrestling show we go and start talking about fucking politics. I gotta just say, I still want to die. Um, wow, you know, I'm, I, I, you were here to pour it. It's fucking awesome. That sounds good. Uh, I, I'm kind of upset at the will. Really, go for it. I'm upset because. On my on my personal Facebook, I'm sitting here and I, and it's become my political platform. Which I don't know why I do it because I'm not I'm not a Republican. I'm not a Democrat. I'm not either. I don't even You're vote. Mine, yeah. I don't vote. Do you right. vote? Uh, not yet. I just got my citizen last year. Oh, okay. Are you in a vote? Yes. Oh, okay. So I vote locally. Oh, okay. But he's so he's so political and and and. and Oski's been been very involved in uh, trying to be. It's yeah. important. It's important. I feel like it's important now. You know what I'm saying? Uh, plus, I'm getting older. I feel like I have to like learn. But I've gotten to a, to a thing where I'm I'm posting on. A, he's really. It's like it sounds like a bartender's in the fucking room. <laughs> Where's Adam Page? Is Adam Hangman Page here? <laughs> it's like he, he's literally making the ice sounds. Yeah. Adam. So <laughs> wait, 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 wait. <laughs> those mics are great. These yeah, mics these are, are awesome. awesome. So, ASMR. ASMR. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> this shit is so fucking clear. It's yes. Wow. Wow. <laughs> ASMR, boy. So, um. Oh. Wow. The, 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 thank you, fucking roadcaster. Yeah, so, thank you. Um. I, I've been having these these debates back and forth with these these supporters of the orange head, right? And it's been a one sided battle, and I I, I I was looking for some Rally help. The troops. Yeah, I, I haven't. I would have I would have helped you, but I haven't seen any of them. So yeah, here's here's my poor excuse at not joining in. I am exhausted. I am right. fucking exhausted. I've been having this. Ongoing battle and 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 uphill war against a, a brick wall for years. But of yeah. what, what? What? With what? Against just anyone who happens to um, have a, um, to be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> not to say that I'm right for the sake of, that I mean. And that's the, that's the thing that I always said that I'm not. I, I don't paint myself to be right. It's no, just no. the fact I'm not like I am not right because the I, will because does the, the will does does this other shit. He goes, he'll battle against religious nuts, but won't go political nuts. I don't see no political nuts. Because um, if I don't know enough about a given subject, right. then I try not to have an opinion. But I've seen you. You've been well-versed in certain things. No, no. I know enough, but I don't know everything. Right. And also, it's not my platform. I try not to invade other people's space. Oh, uh, okay. But so despite of all the shit I say, I am actually rather considerate of other people's space. <laughs> Win of, uh, since is, when? The shocker of the year, Isaac, ladies and gentlemen. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Which is why Isaac's anus is still, you know, dry right now. What? 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 Who said that? <laughs> so, uh, this past week we've been dealing with, we have the town hall meetings. Which, if you want to call it that, I mean. And uh, we have, basically, the numbers are showing that... Um, the the loudest voices are being recognized, but at the end of the day, that's people who are really out there and want to get their voices heard are coming out in the millions of yep. the early voting. Yeah, and, they are. And like I said, it's I'm, showing. I, you could call me a hypocrite or, or whatever you could you you label me. I, I like I said, I go to the George Carlin theory. It's like I, I don't vote, but I'll blame you for who the fuck you put in office. Right. Yeah. 
But at the end of the day, it's like, I want to see that youth initiative go out there and go out and Do let it part. be known that your voice is going to be heard. Well, I'm voting. And also, and also keep they in won't. mind, I also want to keep in mind as well. Listen. They should, but they won't. The 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 uh, the executive office is not the, the the biggest office you need to look for when you're doing your 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 you're voting. planning for voting and how things are going to occur. It's basically the legislative is the ones that you need to go out for Vote and go out. Me. Yeah, I had this. This is uh, I had a discussion with the the argument about the electoral college and the popular vote shit. Oh, you fuck! And I and I showed. Proof from an established individual Source, yeah. who has been accredited with Business Week, with the Washington Post, and all this shit. Right. This is a anyway, shout out to um, CP Gray. I love I, I love this dude. I found him on YouTube, and he has a great following and such. And he does his, he does it's extensive research about everything, and he's a nonpartisan kind of guy. He just says, you know, you, this is what the facts is. He's a, 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 a master's degree in sociology and such and all. And the flaws in the electoral college is immense. It's ridiculous. So I want to I want to educate o- Oski in this. Okay, sure. Oski, you know about the electoral college, right? What is the electoral college? The electoral the electoral college is basically where each state is represented. In their voting by the House of Reps and those individuals who represent that said state, okay. right? Yeah. So random people, no one voted. For nobody them. voted for. Yeah. There are three hundred and twenty-eight billion people who live here, but in each state, it's about five hundred and thirty-eight and so who represent the whole country. Okay. Right. So, do you know, with this electoral college, that a president could be nominated and voted in with how many states do we have in this, in, in this country? Five zero. Oh, 50, right? <laughs> 50, right? 50, right? I don't know. 44? 52? <laughs> two plus two is four. <laughs> what about Puerto Rico and Guam? <laughs> Actually, it's, it's 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 the fifty states plus the uh, um, uh, Washington D.C. is counted, right? I just bullshit. Nothing. Right. It's fifty. Right. So, do you know that to be nominated or to be elected or be voted in as president, you could actually be brought in by the minimum twelve states out of fifty. That's not even one fourth of no, our country. Not. Wow. Each state can be could be represented and 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 honored one. by a fifty one percent vote to bring someone in. That's crazy. I'll give you a quick rundown. California, when it comes to the electoral college, California, New York, California, California has fifty five by electoral college vote. Now, mind you, to be fully acknowledged as a president nominee or and brought in. You need 270 uh, electoral college votes, right? Okay. So if you get California by 55, Texas by 38, Florida by 29, New York by, by 29, Illinois by 20, Pennsylvania by 20, Ohio by 18, uh, 16 by Georgia, 16 by Michigan, North Carolina with 15, Virginia 13, 11 Indiana, the total will be 280. And that doesn't even put a dent into the fifty. Not even, not even. Oh, so, I just need to impress a couple the, of states, and I'm good. Mm. It's a chess. It's a chess game, right? And this is why they're always going to these states. That's why you hear the Iowas, or you hear the Michigans, or you hear the Ohio. Yeah, yeah. As and th- this is who you gotta impress, feng shui, and <laughs> fucking yeah. impress, right, right? You know. Wow, did not know that. That's fucking a little one. That's, and it's uh, unfortunate yep. that that's the minimum because usually the target is usually 22 states. Right. But you really can't. The big hiccup is, and this is the, the conversation that I brought up on when it came to, because um, 
the will is a, he, he likes the outside parties. He's like he likes the Bernies, right? I'm I'm not a Democrat. I'm not a Republican. Mm-hmm. I'm a lib. Uh, I I would say I'm a liberal. You're a libertarian. I'm a humanist. Right. I'm a common senseist. Yeah, c- common sense humanism. Yeah. Same thing. Right. Essentially. But you like Bernie, right? I like Bernie for for his politics. For his policies, sure, yeah. And I was, and I, and I said, you know what, I do too. And I, I, and but I also came to the fact where it's, I'm a realist. Where it's, that shit ain't, ain't going to happen. Uh, right? That's what I was told. They're not voting for no Jews, right? Mm-hmm. But that was the problem. There was a time in which put the mic up a little bit. There you go. Like this, just put it in my mouth. Oh, yeah, that yes. sounds better. You there was a time in bitch. which the Republican Party was third party option. It was the Whigs versus the Democrats, and the third party won. Why? Because people fucking voted for it. Right, but here's the problem. All that needs to happen for a third party to be viable is for people to be willing to listen. I understand is and not listen to the ew. You're throwing away your vote. Yeah, no, yeah, but it is. You're right now. You you really are because after after the primary, yes, yeah. So here's the his, his issue. After the and I know this is a wrestling show, and we're gonna progress. And we're gonna go to the this. primary. But he, fucking he, vote your conscience. No, but here's the thing. But you know what? Don't throw your vote away for somebody who couldn't win the fucking high school fucking secretary position in this school. Right now, it's we're going toe to toe with some real shit to get garbage out or keep garbage in. Granted. So, um, my whole issue is when it comes to electoral college, it gets real deeper because First. because at the end of the day. If you put three or four guys in there, it it turns everything into a clusterfuck because now the electoral the the electoral college two seventy that you need could be spread out and it gives the House of Representative and the Senate and all they give them a power then nobody doesn't understand that shit. Right. I know you could get a vice president that shouldn't be there and they become your president. This is why I tell people the system and our government is flawed, and clearly, and 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 and, 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 yeah, and 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 Oski has to see this every every fucking time he goes to the track or whatever. Every day. <laughs> Thankfully, in the gym, I could keep my headphones, and I'm on one treadmill. I don't have to walk around with people, so you know, I don't have to hear their bullshit. So, but let's retract, and as 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 we always do, we're going back to wrestling. So, so this week on our. Triumphant episode of Turnbuckle Tabloid, which, by the way, I want to give love to everybody who's been listening to us. Hell yeah! Ac- not only from the states but across seas. I, w- I I really want to see how we track Canada. Yeah, well. I, I want I want Canadian fucking um. Yeah, well, well I can make that happen. Can you? I know a few people from Canada who uh, watch wrestling, so I can see. All uh, right, let's get, let's get it connected. But um, this week on Turnbuckle Tabloid, uh, we have our cutting a promo. Cutting a promo this week, we have commentary. We've been hearing terrible commentary. <laughs> <laughs> is that what it is? Yes, it is. Oh man, do you want to know what it is? It's a uh, it's a lack of um, what's the word passion. But we'll talk about that. But it's actually cool because the will is sitting here because and the will is a is our UFC uh, uh, specialist and he'll talk about the commentary as well that goes on in UFC. That Which, uh, it, it, it's uh, uh, in comparison to what happens in wrestling. So we will talk about that. Yes, we also talk. We got going down. We have. Um, uh, 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 around the square circle, which is oh, wow. yikers. AEW was AEW was a complete embarrassment this week. You think so? It, it was. It was. I was. I actually felt bad watching it. And once again, I felt dirty watching. This was it. a I week swear to God. that NXT should have found a way to bounce back. And, and get it did they? We'll find out about <laughs> that. Also, um, wrestling rundown, man. Wrestling rundown. Lots of stories. And T. I don't know if um, I think that'll probably be the biggest story yeah, in the yeah. segment we have this week. I don't think Kuge's around, so we'll have to fill in. But um, we'll be the one that has to deal with that. It's bananas. So uh, a lot, 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 lot for this ep- uh, this episode. Man. So guys, don't go anywhere. Stick around. We will return. Check you guys in a second. Always, always. I want to die. And yeah. oh, wear your mask, motherfuckers. I'll see you guys yeah. in a sec. Wear the cut off your face. This is the COO of WWE uh, Triple H, uh, and you're listening to Turnbuckle Tabloid. Download and stream. From all podcasting outlets like iTunes, uh, Google Play Music, uh, Spotify, uh, iHeart, uh, 
and all podcasting outlets you can listen to. Hey guys, if you are an up and coming artist and you want to share your talents with the world, you know, here at Termical Tablo, we love playing people's music. We do it for anyone who has talent and is inspired to just share their love for music and their passion here at Termical Tablo. Although we're a wrestling show, we do enjoy our music. Oski and I are aficionados and connoisseurs of good music. So, if you want to play your music on Turbuckle Tabloid, make sure you check us out at Patreon at patreon.com forward slash Turbuckle Tabloid. And you just check out our tiers and just give us some love. And we'll show you love by playing your music to the masses who listen to us here at our little goofy podcast. So if you're a big musician and you just want to share it to the masses, check out our Patreon at patreon.com for slash Termical Tabloid and um, one hand washes the other and we'll make sure that people hear your talents. Cutting a promo this week, ladies and gentlemen. We're running down the lanes and we're talking about commentary. Is the is basically is it dying? Is commentary really dying? It's I, been dead, bro. You think so? I know so. It's been dead, and uh, for uh, I don't know why it died, but I'll tell uh, I'll tell you later on when it died. I'll, but I don't know why it did. Uh, the passion's not there no more. It's it's clear that you're either on a script and you're too robotic, or you have no script and you sound like an absolute goof, like on AEW. Because you cannot tell me AEW's commentary team is good. You're on drugs if you tell me that uh, severely, because it's awful. Um, but you know, commentary the commentary team used to be an art, an art form. Uh, it used to be a really important part of the show, and now lately it just really has not been. I don't know how you feel about that. I, I'm over it already. I, I don't blame Michael Cole, Nicole. I blame everyone. I blame. I blame. I blame. It's not Michael Cole's fault. I mean, in all honesty with you, he was doing good commentary with Taz back in 2004. He was doing okay commentary early on in, in 2005, six. It, 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 it's not his. It, I don't think it, it has to do with him. I think it has to do with um, what they're given script wise, uh, what they're what they're given. Um, even if they're given free to do whatever the hell they want, I don't think they're prepared. I don't think they're prepared. I don't think they do enough research no more. I think they show up and just talk and they get it over with. But well, we have we have the um our boy Isaac Rodriguez here, and you're you're basically front line when it comes to commentary now because uh, we we discussed in previous episodes how I'm saying with you, two of the best right now. Yeah, right. Oh, really? Rebirth, you son Rebirth. of a bitch! <laughs> George Nell is a piece of shit. Yeah, we haven't we haven't been hired for that uh, after that for the longest time. <laughs> but Ben, Ben, but, yeah, Ben, 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 ben AEW Dark is not a good team. But okay? I, but wait, hold on. But I want to talk about that. Oh, and and um, I'll talk about it for a yeah. second. You're sitting there, yeah. and, I, and and you know I don't I don't hold any um any um any heavy regrets about that or, or any. Any um, regrets that I didn't do well, or whatever the case may be, because to me, I I, I think that I, when we ventured into doing uh, commentary for a show, I looked at it as that I I saw that the indie wrestling commentary has become those is such a free fall um, open. Mouth. I was gonna get to that, but it's become a free form to form to where that I don't think promoters or bookers or people care really what commentary says what's your thoughts about uh, you being uh, the guy at VXS about when it comes to commentary I think commentary is looked over for a lot of promoters I think uh, that it's a, it's, it's a little detail that's overshadowed I don't think people look into who who is the best broadcaster locally. I just believe, like every other uh, independent wrestling wise, I believe like they just throw people on the mic right now. And I get it. Like sometimes it's meant for it. Like I got Nick Cage calling my shit, but <laughs> but he's actually pretty good it's though. Entertaining. He's but, selling but, it. But, yeah, he's actually pretty good that's though. Because he's 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 also out of action. I want to give him work as well. You know. So 
if we could do something to offer that, I'm obviously going to put him on. But once he's gone, then that's when things really start to change. But, like, a lot of promotions, yeah, like, it's very it's very lazy. It's it's the same thing with uh, production. Like, let's b- buy this guy that has a fucking $60 camcorder to record our show. It's it's about detail, and it's about... Is that what it really value. is, though? It's about value. It's about fan value and, and, and your product, and... Um, especially in wrestling, it, it is hard to find some some good broadcasters that get it and get the sport and get the vision that you want to present. But uh, you, you can't find those. It's, it's hard. You're not going to go and run a show like, let's say, Indiana. How are you going to find somebody? You're just going to go on a – let's see who runs a podcast that's decent. You know, that's their, their mindset. They don't think about – Hey, oh, you talk? Yeah. They don't think about play, right. play, play. They don't think about, oh, can this guy push this guy during a certain uh, – time in the match you know if you guys want to check in call in at 315-371-4367 on our turnbuckle tabloid skype at 315-371-4367 we'll go back to the indie circuit because it was i also i also thought about this is because of what i have heard and what we've we've discussed for a long time about a commentary Basically now in the indie circuit, which kills me, but it's also seeming as though that it's 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 become a reflection of what's going on professionally. Mm. Uh, I I don't want to be this guy who sits there that targets all elite wrestling, but it's become this thing to where and I'm not gonna sit there and talk about that WWE is the grandest of grandest with their commentary either. They're really not. They're and, and the the only ones who have become all right, let's Rose do it. horrendous. Let's do a breakdown of this. Okay. Um with WWE it's become robotic. Everybody has to follow the WWE protocol. Yep. Color commentary is basically almost uh, a wash because you have to follow their guidelines. Um, play by play is useless because why would you do play by play on something when you're watching it? You're seeing it happen. Yeah. So why would I need a play by play? The only thing that would be possibly something that someone needs a um, explanation of is if you don't know wrestling. Uh, some of the moves need to be um, definitely reassured. Like some of the moves definitely need to um, be named. Right. Uh, like so, there's some moves I have no idea the fucking name of. And now that they told me, now but it's I know. also changed too because a suicide dive is now a tope, tope suicida. <laughs> and you know we've which, we've which I'm happy by the way on AEW this week. Eddie Kingston said, "Say it right, pa. It's it, it's tope, not tope <laughs> suicida. It's tope, pa. All right, get it right. Tope, pa. It's tope, pa. Get that shit right." But when you look at uh, it, it, WWE, it has become it, not become, but they've always been robotic. But then you trickle down to um, the AEWs, where AEW is now like, here we go, let's do whatever we want. It's it, basically that's what it is. Turnbuckle's tabloid. I already know who it is. It's my boy Slick. What's going on, boy? What's up? What's, What's going up, on? Slick? Miss you, boy. Miss y'all too. So slick. Um, you're a wrestling aficionado. What okay. what happened to commentary this the, the, in the past few years? I don't know. It's like uh, I just heard Matt saying that like some of the names of the moves need to change, but it's like maybe <laughs> maybe some of the commentators need to learn the names of the moves. Exactly. Everybody's it, everybody's but, slamming Michael Cole. But is that really one of important? The big offenders there. But honestly, is it really important? Because if visually, I'm if I'm watching a match, do I really need to know about the moves if I see it happening in front of me? Who's on the phone right now? I get what you're saying, and you, you do you do make a point, but it's like. Say if it's my first time ever watching wrestling and I'm going to make a habit of it, I, I would want to know the correct names of the moves, at least the correct name that that wrestler gives the move because, you know, there could be a move that has five different names depending upon what promotion you're watching. Right. Yo, Slick. So it's... What's up? Who's your favorite commentator? <laughs> Who's my favorite commentator? Yeah, fool. I think one of the best teams that I can think of just off the top of my head would go back to, like, Jesse Ventura nice. and 
and maybe Joey Schiavone or, or like early, early McMahon when Raw first started, just when they just had more like life in them. Mm. Like Jesse Ventura would talk shit about everybody. And now it seems like the commentators are afraid to because like the wrestler's going to come out the ring and kick their ass. And sh- I'm like, yeah. I think I think when it comes to like you mentioned like the when you mentioned those guys early on it was because you're not putting yourself over you're putting the talent over and during like the the Jesse Ventura uh uh, uh Vince McMahon kind of uh back and forth it was it was a battle of trying to put the talent over by giving your your opinion on who is even a heel and face wise, it was done by the way to say that, listen, my thoughts was, uh, or my feelings for these guys are going to go over. And you, you're trying to put that talent over these days. I really think that commentary is trying to put themselves over more than anything else. EW is a definition of that. P- clearly. <laughs> Yeah, not, do you not, not, a, not do, a fan of JR's. I'm uh, sorry, shit, and and I hate this. I hate, I know we'll talk about it in detail later, but I I when I hear Excalibur, Shivani, and JR, and sometimes even Taz, which by the way, if you're a manager for a fucking heel, you should not be doing commentary. Uh, it, 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 you can't I, say that because I'm even Slick would sit there and say nope, that Bobby the Brain Heenan, because one of the best, I, I, I know Bobby the Brain Heenan, I know, but, exactly. But, yep. but Taz is not doing it good though. Taz forgets sometimes that he should be going, oh, fuck you, Darby Allen. He's like, oh, he's, you know, he's a great... Uh, for me, it's just like, I don't think he's doing it right. There's a way to do it. I don't think he's doing it right. When I when I, when I I hear AEW Dynamite and I hear AEW Dark, I, I hear three things. I hear JR fuck up everything he says. I hear Tony Schiavone just try to throw in a quick giggle and, and try, try, to try to do some sort of common sense. And I hear Excalibur overhype everything, even an arm drag. So it, it, to me, to me... AEW just, I, 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 and, and it's a hot take. And I'll be honest with you guys, I don't, I don't know this for confirmation, but I'll bet my salary on this shit. There is no script for AEW commentary. They, well, they sit down and think about it thirty minutes before the show starts about what to do. And Jr. still doesn't know the name in the roster. Nicole said it perfectly. Can we know the name of the fucking men and women that we're seeing wrestle correctly? <laughs> Correctly, how many times does how many times does Jr. fuck up someone's name? What does he call Jungle Boy? Jungle Boy Jack Perry. That's a, so annoying, so annoying. How no, but t- the, like how many? No, times? but the other thing, the other the other one is um, what is it um, Willie Hobbs. And, Willie Hobbs, and, and there's but, no Willie. But, but you have the t- you have the talent actually have to cover for them for that. Yes, because yep. Willie Hobbs went on Twitter and says my mama called me Willie. And my grandmama called me Willie, so it's cool to say that. But it's like, no, dude, you came in in the business as Will Hobbs. Yeah, Will Hobbs, and 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 you know, I love Sunny Kiss as well. Listen, Jr. be fucking up shit, and <laughs> and we be defending it. We listen, I get it, I get it. Let's def- let's 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 defend the the man, the cowboy hat. But I'm over it. So yeah, he needs to fucking he, he should be in the back producing some shit. AEW is the definition of I want to put myself over. AEW is the definition of I want to make a joke and, and laugh and get on social media and get. Get trending, and uh, they do not sound like they care about the show at all. Jr.'s voice to me screams, "I'm trying to get a paycheck and a, and, a, and, a li- and some liquor." <laughs> it's, like, <laughs> before, it's, it's like before, before, before we let you go. Like you just you mentioned who what was your um your 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 favorite commentary team, but what 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 needs for in your opinion what needs to what needs to change with the the the, the landscape. Of commentary, does it really matter that commentary really is important to wrestling these days? I think it's a big part of the entertainment. I mean, just from what I grew up on, it's like, could it change where we just watch the match? Of course it could, but it's like, if if we could get somebody who would just at least strive to want to be as great as somebody like a Gorilla Monsoon or Jesse Ventura, that would be amazing. It's like, give them the freedom, just like you. we want, want them to give the wrestlers the freedom. The commentary is part of the entertainment, I feel. And if you have somebody that has that kind of freedom and has puts that kind of work into it, it can only improve the product because 
you know, listening to that, I mean, I know Matt was tearing apart Jr. But like in his in his glory days, hearing stuff like you know, stick a fork in him and stuff like that, that that was that was part of it. God damn. <laughs> Damn, Thank son. You, thank you, streets of New York. Sure. Well, no. it, you know, and, and see, and see, and that's that's the sad thing, uh, Slick. He was so good in his glory days. He, you know, those catchphrases, those lines would put over a match in a second. But when it goes from he, put, um, you know, whatever the fuck, he put a, a mud hole in him to and I flag Darby Allen, uh, fucking uh, whatever. I'm drinking. <laughs> uh, I, 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 like, from that to that, and that's exactly it's how he sounds. It's a, it sounds like he's drinking. He's like, I, I can't believe but Darby that's... Allen's facing Stone Cold Steve. I mean, um, I mean, uh, fuck. Uh, who's this? Luchasaurus. Oh my god. But um, it's like, that's thanks. the exact reason why they need to not let freaking Ric Flair back in the ring to talk anymore. But thank you. He has been drinking. Thank you, Six, for calling in as always. Thank you for showing love. And finally, you get to call in on the time that you're not uh, too busy for us, man. Thanks for for checking in, bro. All right, brothers. Later. Later, Later Slick. My 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 whole premise is like, like I, w- I want to start from early on, and and it goes on to like the Gordon Sullys, uh, to the Jim Rosses early on. Um, when you get to, um, like I said, when when when. Um, the Lord Alfred Hayes when you get to those guys early in the game, it sold the match more than anybody had thought would be the match because before the bell rang, they made the match the, 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 bigger than it was. Even if it was two fucking jobbers, it'd be Mike Jones versus Frank Schliever James. Morgan. It was like there was a some kind of of substance to the match. To me, like you just said, for me, the commentary team before each match was always like the the pitcher, like setting up the setting up the ball, getting right. ready to get hit. Right. Like, like they they're the storytellers here. They're supposed to be the narrators. They're supposed to be as excited or more excited than we we should should be, and then get us to that level. And. I guess we're going to go around the rounds of who our favorite commentary team is later, but I will say, ever since my favorite commentary group vanished, I have not seen the passion, I have not seen the storytelling, and I haven't seen the the charisma from these guys. People shit on Michael Cole. I think he's still loud. I think he's... Listen, he's annoying, but the dude still fucking shows me that he, he kind of cares about the product. Uh, some some people's... Uh, oh, yay, yay, back body drop. Like, you're falling asleep. No, I think he's more robotic when it comes to... Um... Michael Cole, because Michael Cole and he's sat a, there. Yeah, but he's the, he's the lead guy in the back. Michael Cole already knows what it is that when he comes to himself. Yep. Tom Rocket Tablet, who's this? Hi, uh, guys. It's Ben. How are you doing? Ben the Bridge, sir. What's going on, sir? What up, man? Mate. I'm cu- I'm currently at work, so if I do cut off, it's because I'm busy, but I thought I'd ring in and say hello. Oh, thank you, sir. Miss thank you, you, Ben. Thank you for doing that. I don't. I don't want to take you out of your work schedule because I know that you have uh, too many people that you have to shout out to to Ben because he's a, a, a quote unquote non essential guy out there and he's busting his ass with people out there. But with all that being said, favorite commentary of your uh, of your generation, Jerry Styles. Nice. Okay. It's great because um yeah, that's a good one. I'm gonna I'm gonna reference uh, to the question that uh, that I posted on Turbo Tabloid this week. But Joy Styles was a big uh, um, a big plus for uh, wrestling fans. Why would you say Joy Styles? Because he did it on his own for a large part of ECW's uh, existence. Like if you watch the my favorite pay per view of all time, ECW barely legal. He commentates on that pay per view on his own. The guy doesn't need anybody, and he made every match amazing. And there was a couple of shitters in that match as well. And then, you know, a few years down the line, he got uh, uh, Don Callis in with him, and he's a really good commentator as well. So, uh, Cyrus the Virus. So, <laughs> Jerry Styles, just because he's, he's passionate as well. And obviously, he got his catchphrase, oh my God, and all that shit. But, yeah, for me, him, he, he was. He was it's just his passion, I think. I think his passion for the for the sport and his brain for it made him really, really good, in my opinion, anyway. Is that what we're missing, though? Like, those, um, those maybe the catchphrases? Are we, are we, are we missing 
Um, are we are we missing a little flavor on each each member of the commentary team, Ben? Like, do, are we like like you said, Joey Styles has the oh my god, and every, you know, and everyone has the, their own shit. Should we be adding gimmicks yeah, to these commentary um, team members, or what, what, what are we doing? I think with commentary, I think if you have a two a two team commentary team, you have to have a heel and a face. Agreed. Like on you, I'm with you on AEW. Like Jr. As much as I like Jr. Um, I think he's passed it a bit. You know, he's like the face commentator. Excalibur's like a face commentator. Scavone doesn't really say anything, but he's a face commentator. That's why I don't particularly mind Taz when Taz comes on, because, you know, he's a, he's a heel commentator. But I just don't think commentators have got any um, personalities or charisma these days. And the ones that do aren't really in the business at the moment. Like, I think one of the best commentators around is Matt Stryker. And I, I don't know what wow. you guys think, but I'm a big fan of Matt Stryker's commentator. I'm also a big fan of Nigel McGuinness as a commentator as well. I think Nigel McGuinness is great. I, I, I have to disagree when it comes to the, the premise of uh, you need a face and heel commentator. Uh, I'm more of a fan of two guys watching a match and they give their 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 bits and pieces of what they're seeing going on and sharing it with the fan base. I I I, I I've always been one of those that when I'm watching something, and we're we're. I, I want to be that. I want to be that guy that we're watching it together. I don't need to be strong. Or, like when I watch football, when I watch baseball, um, you still have that guy who who will tell you what what the fastball or on outside of plate is. Yes. But I also have the thing about where is the connection where the fan is watching and he's there and doesn't need to hear all that. And I think that's what wrestling is. Joey, and I'll go more into it later. The Joey Styles kind of commentary cannot be ever done again. I really don't think that can ever be replicated again. Because it's because the necessity that was there. And you had a guy that I don't even think to this day that Joey knew about fucking wrestling like he did. But he made it sound like he knew what it, he what, sold what it. it was. He sold it. And the, the thing with Joey as well is he was a part of that company right from the beginning, so his heart was in it. Whereas, you know, like, JR, I'm with Olski, like, when I hear JR, I just think, hey, he's just there for the paycheck. He's not really that bothered. Whereas if you had, like, guys who were there from the start and they are embedded in the company, then it does, like, Michael Cole. I'm not a huge fan of Michael Cole, but you can't say too much bad about him because the guy's right. been there for a long time he's got Vince fucking raping his ear every three seconds telling right. him what to say and that's in the, Whereas, and that's something that I, yeah. I, we'll talk about in a minute but yes yeah you have that um, but like I said I, I'm, and I also think commentators have got way too much things to think about like they have to think about I know this is a bit weird to say but they have to kind of think about what they're saying before they say it and I think you can like, I, one of my all-time favourite commentators, I loved Vampiro on Lucha Underground because he swore his bollocks off. Were you a, fi- were you a fan I- of him? Vampiro. Yeah. Yeah, he was basically like Lucha Underground's Nick Cage. Oh, okay. Yeah. I like, I, and the yeah. teaming with Matt Stryker as well complimented very well because he kind of, like, helped him in the process. So they're, yeah. they're, they're a duo that clicked, and it's rare to, rare to find that. that they're, very, they're very dedicated towards uh, Lucha, too, so... Yeah, I like, yeah, like, like Mavio. He's good. They didn't really have too many reins on him. Like they weren't, they weren't said right. Don't say this. Don't say that. Yeah. And I think a lot of the people, especially nowadays, because everyone's so PC, mm-hmm. I think the commentators also have to think about too much what they what they're gonna say, like in case they offend anyone. Jim Cornette, prime example. Mm. Um, so I think they've got two, I think commentating is a very very hard art at the moment. These in this present day. Yeah. It's a good point, Ben. It really is, you know. Um, the PC vibe um, definitely makes it harder. Uh, this is probably why they do a script more and more each day is because if something slips out, one small blot slips out. Like the whole Jim Cornette thing in MWA, they had to let him go. Uh, ben, before we let you go, um, you, 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 you've been an aficionado and you've seen different areas of, uh, of different wrestling promotions and they commentators. Um, go to guy right now 
if you had your choice that who and I, anybody of you who you you heard speak who do you think would be a good wrestling commentator these days MJF yeah I actually commentated a show with him at the Elks Lodge like uh, what was that he- what company was it Matt it was like I think you were there ICW, BCW. It might have been ICW or BCW, but like he is so gold. He's gold at everything he touches. That guy. Yeah, I'd say, I'd say, anyone with a bit of good charisma. So I'd say MJF, Young Vet. Right <clears> and there. I also think Bully Ray would be an all right commentator as well because he, uh, he knew the business inside out. As long as he stayed like a heel commentator, I think he would be quite good as well. Yeah, I've, I've heard him commentate before. Um, yeah. <laughs> and, and, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that shit is suspect as hell. But other than that, but yeah. <laughs> Ben, thank you for uh, checking in as always. And you're, you're, uh, oh God, uh, I love you, bro. I love you. I need you to start downloading the episodes more because we need more of that England push, Ben. But thank you for everything, sir. You're very welcome. And if I'm still awake tomorrow, I'll come on get vocal because I'm working tonight. Oh, we'll be there. we'll be on tomorrow. Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah, I know that, but what I'm saying is I finish at 8 o'clock tomorrow morning and then I'm at football all day until 8 o'clock the following night on no sleep oh, God. on Saturday night. You if just I'm said that all waiting, I was blah, 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 blah. Maybe I'll see you, blah, blah, blah. We'll see you later, so, sir. Yeah. Hey, hey, <laughs> wow. All right, thank, thank you, Ben. Shout out to Ben. See you later, guys. Later. Later. Um, Ray, who's your favorite commentary team of all time? Oh man, it's not even team; it's just commentary. Well, Yo, it's just one I, person? It, not for nothing, but the 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 Joy Styles argument has been great. But before I do that, I, I want um Will let um switch up a bit. I want Will to come in for a second because I I want the other aspect for um the UFC style because Go ahead. it's basically um. Same world, but you know different different aspect. You have the, the you have the Joe Rogans. You have yeah. uh, uh, the other assholes after. <laughs> the other assholes after. No, but um, when it comes to 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 the UFC style, the UFC style of, of commentary, the MMA's, what m- makes them more prevalent than anybody else when it comes to the commentary of of the sport? It really is all about the th- the team. It's all about. Um, you got to have the one guy, the one person who is really good, who is really knowledgeable. But why is it that they, they weigh heavy on Joe, though? Because he's a color guy. Is he color? Yeah. He's both. Right. Is it because he, he's the he's uh, the, the blue collar? Um, uh, he's not fucking blue MMA, collar. MMA, but you know what I mean. The blue collar MMA fan who's... Um, Gravitate because we know no. the history of Joe. The, the, the reason we know why, the history of Joe. The why, why he Joe does Rogan it. works is because he knows what the fuck he's talking about. Right. He is the un like he he is uh, a jujitsu master, but and never fights in any of this shit. He yeah, right. Huh? He doesn't need to. He, yeah, like. He knows what he's what he's talking about. When when he when he speaks about jujitsu, he knows what he's talking about. Right. When he speaks about um kicking, he knows what he's talking about because he's a uh, taekwondo black belt. Yeah. He he understands boxing enough to know what he's what he's talking about. So he knows he, he, he just and he knows what he's talking about, period. So people yeah. so people just accept what he says generally. You need Someone like that, plus someone else, to keep the motion going, which he also does, depending on who he's with. Joe Rogan is the master because he can he can be the color guy, he can be the expert guy, and he can be the guy who just sort of keeps it going because of his. Um, Comedy background, but is it not only the puck, the comedy background? Is it because of the podcast as well that he seems to to get a connection with the audience as well? No, I think the podcast sort of disappears when it, when he's um commentating. He just becomes the guy who's looking at a thing. He becomes the, the podcast is a completely different animal. That is, I, I I see that as well. Are you a fan of Rogan? Uh, mostly he's Love you know he he's become such a boomer. Uh, Love the show. Uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> but 
but he has interesting guests who might either you know agree or I'm disagree. talking about I'm talking about the podcast. I'm talking about him as a commentator for, for um I, I, I as a commentator yeah. I think he's really good uh, when it comes to facts. Well, when it comes to um, because they they always Color it, or... no, but when it comes to him and because it's not always the same team that he has. I always find that it's always interchangeable when they come, when they 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 put other people around him in, in certain um, environments. Right. Um, is he that kind of guy that works that he's able to mesh with? He everybody? works with everyone. Yeah, right, right. And I think that's what I think. Okay, that's why. Uh, uh, okay, I, I understand what you meant by the yeah, podcast. Right, right. The fact that he's able to just meld with anyone and just allow them right, to become right, right. The, the, their, but their commentary yeah, team yeah. and such. Yeah. Yeah, um, he does that pretty well. Uh, maybe the best, right? Um, in which, like, he just he, he feels out the person who he's with, and then he knows his role in comparison to them. So, yeah, in in terms of of that, I think you're right. But um, you start shouting out people on every word, and there's people on the on the. But on. um. If 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 Rogan if Rogan leaves um, if Rogan leaves, does it kill the commentary team? No, because who there, steps up? Several people, because like like I like I like I just explained, Rogan is a multifaceted creature. He does several things really well, and there are people who can take over for those several things he does well. All they need to do is pair up who's good at what. And when, and Rogan will be missed, but not exactly. Uh, it it won't devastate the whole game. All right, all right. So now I can do a rotation. Thank you for sending it for this You're one. All right. Well, uh, let me do my job. Let, right. let, let me do my job. Hello, Kyle from um, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Ben. Uh, ben says UFC has great commentary because they have old fighter commentators too. Who have good charisma? Kenny Florian, Michael Bisbing, Dan Hardy, and Daniel Cormier. Bisbing is pretty good, though. I like. Yeah, yeah I like Bisbing when he does his, his, his comments over there. So that's the UFC conversation, uh, which I love. I love. I love the UFC commentary. So I'll do a quick rundown. Um, uh, my boy Sean, he talks about Sean Gonzalez talks about Jason Ventura and Bobby Heenan was was his big commentary team. Oh, I can't write it. Uh, of course, a lot of people love Joy Styles. Yeah. Um, uh, Ken Griffin says, "Don't sleep on Paul Heyman. Paul Heyman had I when enjoyed he, it when he left ACW and went into um, WWE WWF at that time. Yeah. And filled right out before those ACW stop, got bought out. Yeah. It, it's Paul is like uh, I, I he he like I said I always say he's the white whale for us we'll never get him but yes I, I will one day but we could, but I I was I I did see on many interviews he was not a pleasure to work with on the commentary booth Jr said he was he was annoying he kept cutting him off well because uh, that's Paul um, Heyman uh, but that, yeah, that's Paul but at the end of the day like he well, he did not he, he did not get positive reviews from his team from his partners I love I love Henry Henry sat there he goes Gordon Sully and it's like how many y'all motherfuckers are know that shit y'all I have young no as idea. fuck <laughs> I hear Sully I think Monsters Inc so. Uh, uh, no clue Good Dead Angel always goes back to the, um, Bobby Heenan and 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 um. Gorilla Monsoon, of course, the classic. Uh, classic. Rondo's an ass because he bring he brings up Mike Adam Lee. <laughs> wow, Jeff Harvey Hardy. <laughs> and, uh, but when you when you go to um, the progression of what we're dealing with from the past to now, um, it's not an easy transition because you. Know, Oski, listen, we we've done it, we've tried it. Yes, we, we 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 put our hat in the game. Yeah, and we 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 tried to to throw it in, and, and I've always thought about the styles is not. Uh, I I think of it as different because it depends on the audience you're trying to gravitate. To. Yes, yes, absolutely. Um, uh, it depends on the show, depends on the vibe, it depends on um. You got to read the room. Uh, if if th- there's a different. There's a different way to commentate ICW than WWE. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I you know, deathmatch via wrestling. Like, it depends on the style of wrestling. Everything matters, and I think people aren't 
looking at those details anymore. But like, it's just about who do you pitch to. Listen, uh, Isaac's sitting here, and he has a promotion that he's with. Um, when you when you're looking for commentary, what are you looking for for your commentary? Like what what's what, what when you go to the mindset, are you looking for somebody who's going to sit there and and give you play by play, connect 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 to the audience for your style or your or your or your presentations to the audience, or are you looking for somebody that's very professional, has a verbose kind of fucking um um? What is it that you're looking for? You you don't want to go for, straight for someone that like knows everything, you know. You you want you want that mystique, but you also but that's it for your promotion. Yeah, yeah. But it depends who you are. But at the end of the day, what I, at least for what I look for, I look you look for someone that's passionate about it, someone that actually gives a shit, and somebody that wants to push the, the talent in the show, and someone that wants to put over something besides themselves. Yeah, Be because selfless, every other, selfless. Every other indie, that's exactly what's happening right now. Yeah. And you, you you think about value, like I said earlier, like the. You want you want someone that wants it, and you you just read off the energy. If you don't have that energy, you're not going to be on. No. Who's a, who's 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 the who's the, the the booming commentators in the indie scene right now that you would give props to? That, like you think MLJ doing- MLJ is the best right now. Like I'm 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 very lucky to have MLJ. MLJ is like uh, a lot of people like compare his tone to like Excalibur, but less annoying. You know, <laughs> <laughs> less but annoying. No, he's, he's 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 really gifted, and he he. Uh, he used to do the CZW commentary when you know they were good. So uh, he's, when he's, they were alive, I'm pretty yeah, sure they were alive. dead. And he, yeah, there's there's no platform for him. So MLJ is definitely in, in that in that loop right now. Um, uh, Rick Rich or Rick from MLW, mm. uh, fantastic. And he was a le- he was let go from NXT not long ago. Uh, Rich B, I, I'm butchering his name, but gotta say, not a fan of Ian Riccaboni. You know, yeah, Rick, uh, uh, not a uh, fan. Rick Abani and fucking uh, 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 Caprice. Uh, Little detail like that matters so much. And Caprice Coleman have been amazing. Really? And, uh, Caprice and, uh, Coleman. Have I been didn't hear that. Hey, Caprice Coleman has been amazing on uh, the, R- uh, the ROH. Uh, the Pure uh, Tournament? The Pure Tournament. I amazing. love that. I've been seeing the clips and stuff. It's been amazing. Um, if only they were like in a channel that was on my TV. Listen, <laughs> yeah, I, facts. I, I, know my, I know my strengths and my weakness. I know for me. I know what it is. And um, I'm I'm one of those that I when I look at like for us I, I said that goes the same. We, we, if we do a flyby, we'll do whatever it is. It's cool because you know we 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 we'll come in. We 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 we'll love the we love the product and we'll we we'll have fun with it. But when you when you're really genuinely looking for a uh, uh, commentary, it, it it it's it's a lost art. It really is because people don't understand that, um, especially nowadays, these commentators are not doing it for the 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 talent that's in the ring. They're doing it for themselves. Corey Graves, no, and you 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 cough it, but it's true. And even um, the 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 nowadays uh, in the AEWs or or even uh, the 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 independents. They lose the idea that listen. It's about them, not me. Yeah, it's it's. You're enhancing them. What gets over is you putting the talent over, not yeah. you. And once you put mm-hmm. the talent over, networks, promotions, doing they your job. all yeah. they all see that. And like what Maddie said, it's all about like the tone that not only the the show is, but the company. And you got you got to match that tone. It's the language yeah. that mixes well with it. Uh, ECW was very successful. I think a majority of that for Joey Styles putting the company on his back, big and, time, right. and and for doing literally everything backstage besides commentary. Like he he he's a guy that he, he fit into many roles, and he wanted it, and he was passionate, and he was dedicated, and he, he 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 went for it, you know. So yeah, not many are, are going for it, and also just like being different is key, you know. It's you gotta be different, and, and it's the same thing. And I hate to, and like, like I said, I coughed it, but I think one of the one of the, the commentaries I'm le- le- liking the least is Corey Graves. He's the definition of I'm gonna put myself over. I, I have my own podcast now. It's you have to love the business. You have to love what you're watching. You have to, and I also think Red. I don't know if you agree with me on this one, but I feel like commentary kind of died when it went from the commentary is becoming a part of the show to just. Sp- more sports like, where it's like they're in the background and they only they're only talking rather than having characters. 
Uh, yeah. Because I'm not going to lie, like, looking back, we complained about Michael Cole being a heel and it was terrible. But I prefer having a, some sort of a character on a, on the commentary team because it matters. It may, it makes what they say me going, I fucking hate you, Jeff. Like it makes me st- like when Michael Cole was a heel, regardless if he liked it or not, I was screaming at the screen, going, "Yo, Michael, shut the fuck up, yo, you're wrong." Nah, I, I'm more on the opposite because I'm more of the guy that just enjoys the fact that you're the outside entity. And what really killed me was when you brought in Tony Schiavone and um, was Isaac was sitting there and be like, "It's like, yo." Tony Schiavone is probably one of the biggest guys in the industry that you brought back yes. from uh, 20 years out. Yes, absolutely. And you brought him back in, and he's getting super kicked. Every week. <laughs> and his, his chest laugh. And yeah. he's great. Yeah, he and is. And he's great. I think he's only saving grace. and Even that's a reach. But, uh, you know, and, and it trickles down because, it, it and like I said, I, I'm not bullying AEW because NXT has the same problems. Um, SmackDown will have the same they problems. All do. They, all, they do. all do. They all do. But the whole thing is that listen, you got to take in consideration that your 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 position in that job is to put the talent over, not yourself. And yeah. I think that's what what's been lost. And I even say it from the big names to even the indies guys. It's like right. you guys are doing way too much. Yeah, for it, and before we, I, I let it, I, I, we we let this go. Um, commentary was the staple for me to be a fan of wrestling. True. Um, I love Ted like Cole, man. Like I said, the Gorilla Monsoons, the fucking Bobby Heenan's, the 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 Lord Alfred Hayes. Um, going going back uh, to the Jim Rosses to. Uh, uh, um, even when Dusty and all these guys did it, they were my entrance into wrestling because they sold what I was watching. I didn't need to know what a wrist lock was opposed to an arm lock. I didn't care about that. I was caring about the story that brought that match together or brought these guys together. It could be two jobbers that was in there and you fucking sat there and made it seem as though that it was they important. Matter. Even if it didn't matter, but these days it's you know the profanity and the 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 cell mongering of, yeah. uh, of 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 oh my god fuck you and your fucking guys that are in the ring right now you don't know what fucking wrestling is right now unless you see this fucking promotion it's like dude <laughs> you're terrible stop. It's 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 yeah, not. Yeah, stop saying stop saying fuck every five seconds. Please, You're not honestly. putting yourself over anybody else with it as well. Stop. No. Learn how to fucking announce. Learn how to tell do a story commentary and tell the fucking story, and that's what matters. Which, by but, the way, before we jump off, I do want to say my favorite group, which no one has mentioned yet. <laughs> wow, that hurt my feelings. I love, you. love you too. And um, I, maybe I'm going to get lashed for this, but I fuck it. I, my favorite commentary team of all time has to be Mike Tanay and Don West. And that's yeah, that's, that's yeah. not bad. Hell yeah. That's amazing. I was that, say that earlier. That that's group, not that's that, amazing. Uh, that group, group that group put me over the hill to like TNA more than WWE back Of in course. Days. That's They're amazing. Awesome. Like, that's amazing. That's that great. That is my all time favorite commentary. The, the Mike Tanay. No baby. one no one could beat Tanay and Don West for an X Division match. I love Don do you right. hear the commentary that like they do? They they put that shit over every Sounds week. Sounds like Shad Wow's in a match. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, seriously <laughs> though. But that's yeah. <laughs> every match sound like a yeah, Shad yeah. no. Every match sound like like a Yo, Shadow Wow commercial. Like, I remember, I, remember, <laughs> like, I, I, like, I remember being a kid and automatically thinking, yo, Don West is going to have a heart attack. Yeah. But that's a, but that's a good this thing. Was right all the and time. I'm going to tell you who's one of my favorite, if not up there, that I should I, I should give him the, the credit that he it, that um is due. But that, 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 honestly, nobody really recognized. And I, I don't know, I'm fucking sad back, but Kevin Kelly. Is wow, wow, amazing! I heard that, long, that name in a very long time. Wow, amazing! Kevin Kelly, ladies and gentlemen, uh, what he's done in Ring of Honor and all that shit. Yeah, yeah, you're right. 
You're right. That is, that is a good. That is a good pick. He is phenomenal. Killing man. it in New Japan. I've been seeing uh, New Japan a lot more recently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, his English commentary is very amazing. Good. But really of course, good at I can't. I can't. Too. I can't. I can't steer away from the recent ones because um, Good Dad Angel has to say, uh, Manalo Ronaldo is of course uh, yes is is great. And it's so it's so bad that because even in MMA, Ronaldo is Ronaldo. fucking. He's uh huh. Ronaldo is special. He did yeah, Bellator, he's right? special. He did Bellator. He did, he, I, he did UFC as well. He did a UFC as well. He did. He did. Ronaldo is fucking awesome. Did he he also did I think no. one kickboxing. Um, did he? He no. He he spread out. He, he spreads spread out. himself out. He's awesome, dude. You see but, him on um, Showtime one weekend. But Kevin fucking... Kelly and fucking um Ronaldo is those those two um undercards that really need to be acknowledged as as great fucking commentators, man. Ronaldo is really good for keeping it going. Whatever yeah. happens to be going on, whether it's anything interesting or not, he makes it interesting. He makes it. And he's so he fucking. You. He he's current you. event, and, and that's what that, gives you a bunch of information. He knows everyone. And I think WWE should have taken better care of him, but you know he's one of those wild cards. But yes, uh, he's a hit or miss with uh, his emotional issues and everything. But, but uh, great talent. But other than that. Guys, thanks for um, partake, uh, partaking and uh, cutting a promo on our Facebook. And uh, we got more to come down. We have, uh, of course, a wrestling rundown as much. I want to die. <laughs> Yo, what, that, 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 that's circle. the tagline? What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> uh, guys, don't go anywhere. Stick around. We'll return. Check you guys in a sec. Thank you for everybody for checking in. Laters. This is Jim Russell from Choked Out Radio, and you're listening to Turnbuckle Tabloid. What's going on, everybody? As you know, this is Matt Olsky from Turnbuckle Tabloid, but when I'm not here talking wrestling, uh, I have another hobby, which is collecting Funko Pops. So uh, if any of you guys want to check out my new page, The Funko Hub on Instagram, we promote Instagram live sales, raffles. And just talk about anything Funko related, uh, what you're collecting, what I'm collecting, and supporting the community at its finest. So, guys, check out the Funko Hub on Instagram uh, for all your Funko needs and uh, to support the Funko community together. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of Turnbuckle Tabloid. This is Wrestling Rundown. <laughs> hey. Oskar has uh, has already said that we we should not ever change this intro. <laughs> never, never. I don't care how many episodes deep. I don't care. For, I don't care how many episodes deep we going, man. But never, never. We are for sure, for sure, keeping this song. Yes, <laughs> we have to. It's the one song that will never go away, no matter what we do. It's a promise. Oh my God, shit, yo! This is this has been a good night, hasn't it? <laughs> Absolutely, it's been quite a night, ladies and gentlemen. Turnbuckle tabloid once again, wrestling rundown, the main event. Oh my God, hold on, shit! I, I um, damn. Here we go. I gotta drop this down. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. Um, a lot of news this week, man. A shitload of fucking yeah, it's news. A lot. It's a lot. Last week we didn't see shit, but this week we see a lot. Last week was a dry desert. Now we're in the fucking tundra uh, yeah. of news. So, yeah. uh, ready to get it started? Um, yeah. Will said no. That's not a tundra. <laughs> oh. Tundra and desert are the same thing. So <laughs> wow. All right. Well, fine. Um, the war, the the waterfall of news. I love when he fucks up. <laughs> yeah, it's whatever. I, I try to make it work, and you just blow me up. It's whatever. Yeah. As always, I am the host starter of this segment to the Robin Ophelia Quibbles Olski. So, Olski, take it away. Ladies and gentlemen, the first piece of news we have is surprising and disappointing. It has been confirmed that Eva Marie has signed with WWE once again, and she's back 
with the company. Red, they've signed all <laughs> red, all red, everything's back with the company, ladies and gentlemen. Um, it's confirmed that she signed on September 20th, and it's been a secret until Cultaholic officially broke the news. Um, unbelievable. The, <laughs> the woman, the woman who couldn't wrestle for shit's back. Red, what do you think? The only people who give a shit about this. Uh, no, sorry. Uh, it's not people. It's person who gives a fuck about this. <laughs> right. It's Rondo. Rondo's the <laughs> only ben, one who cares about this. And Ben, and she's ben. hot. <laughs> exactly. Um, well, why do you think they they did this? Do you think that it was just like throwing her a bone? Well, apparently they said that she's actually been working off and she's she's doing um uh, her 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 due diligence to get back into business. So. Apparently that she she worked off that she she's gotten to the, to training uh worked with certain different individuals so apparently she's apparently she's she's doing what she should do I, you know what at the end of the day what the fuck I, 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 why <laughs> I think why they gotta, they gotta team her. I'm trying I'm trying to make some kind of uh reason that this there is good, is but none. There is none. There is none. She was a terrible wrestler. She was a terrible uh, on the I mic. I guess it's going to be this um, prove me wrong kind of shit. All and, right, and she whatever. ain't going to. Right. So, um, even Marie, back with the company, guys. I cannot fucking believe it. Where do you think what brand is she going to? Um, um, that brand that says um, who gives a fuck? Exactly. Oh, okay. There's only <laughs> what the fuck? To you, and I'm gonna <laughs> what the fuck was that? Although Vice has yet to announce the third season of Dark Side of the Ring, interviews are officially being conducted for topics that will be featured for future episodes. PW Insider confirms on Monday that interviews were done for planned episodes on the late Grizzly Smith and his children, Jake the Snake Roberts, Rockin' Robin, and Sam Houston. Um... Eric Bischoff also noted on the most recent 83 Weeks podcast that there will be episodes on the late Brian Pillman and the WCW New Japan event in North Korea. Uh, wow. Well, what do you think about those topics for season three? Yeah, it looks like the topics are getting pretty thin. Yeah, well, <laughs> I mean, listen, once you do Benoit, you kind of can't go any yeah, yeah, higher yeah, than that. You so. don't hit your peak. You don't jump the shark. I, I think it's getting pretty thin there. What do you think about the, some of the topics? Brian Pillman, New Japan, and WWE working together. Pillman is actually pretty good. I think Jake um, Roberts is going to be amazing. Jake Jake is big. That's yeah, a good that's one. Yeah, big. that's big. That's a big one. But <clears> other than that, it's like... Uh, you you can't do too you can't do too much without you know, like rocking Robin. No, you can't do too much without sitting there and um really pulling back the the skin of Vince McMahon and you can't you can't so, and they always will every season will that's be that's the big one yeah and get ready because Jake's a part of AEW they're gonna violate Vince yeah, <laughs> they're so, gonna violate the Big E so yeah so you can't do it um what, what what are your thoughts so far so two seasons in of Dark Side of the Ring uh, two I seasons, love it two seasons are great but now you already know that. It's going to get worse. Yes, yeah, not going to happen, Pam. R-O-N-D-O. Next up. Lars Sullivan has been accused of sending unsolicited inappropriate messages to a married woman and uh, speculation is running rampant this week. Lars Sullivan returned to WWE TV on Friday Night SmackDown last week and um, automatically he's being accused to sending dick pics to a married woman. No. Uh, a thread on Reddit popped up today, well, yesterday, with screenshots sent by Sullivan to Anika Naidu Fuge, which I definitely butchered that name. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> what a hatchet. Um, the messages, the messages, the messages that were shown show Sullivan asking her how much it would cost for her booty program. Um, she said it was fifty dollars, and he follows up by telling her, "I double that for pics." Just saying. Oh no. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> um. Yowzers. So what's wrong with that? <laughs> um. Wait. The messages continue with him saying that he is enamored with her profile, and I like looking at your legs. In another message, Sullivan said, "You got any? You got any booty pics in these? In in those, hun?" She responded. <laughs> She responded, hey, Lars, I'm going to refund you your money. I told you before, I block people who send me messages like this, so you've kind of had a warning. 
I don't have time to work with clients who don't respect boundaries. I'm a happily married woman. It's also not very smart that on your part, given you're quite you're quite well known. Um, of course, as we know, Sullivan was in hot water in 2019 after his racist and misogynistic posts, as well as being uh, included in gay porn. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> is Lars Sullivan the definition of a train wreck in professional wrestling? Um. <laughs> no, he's a man. Damn it! That's what men do. Men loves women and men love sex. Or whatever. Nah, he's fucked up, bro. <laughs> he's uh, fucked up. But then they're still pushing him. Vince loves the guy. He just beat Jeff Hardy in five minutes. Um, dude, like this. this I, 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 I don't. When he came back, hey, look. <laughs> I'm so lost with this Lars Sullivan shit because I don't understand why there's some kind of push for him. I don't, I don't get it. I don't. I really don't get it. I don't get it either. I think he's stale. It's potato chips. I think uh, it's a real mess. It's a real mess. And it's not even. Bef- it's not even when this this, this allegation came out. The, my whole idea of him before him was. Why? I don't I don't see anything with him. Even when he's in NXT, I was like Don't get it. Never I, will. Nothing, but whatever. Um It's, so, it's stupid. I don't He know, said I, was, I, I I would double that for booty pics. <laughs> well, At least you know he's a dude, right? Yeah, <laughs> I mean, yeah. what are you gonna say? I guess. Shazam! Next up. Unfortunately, I have some bad news. Oh, God. As um, a lot of fans and actually people in the business are very concerned on the health condition of Scott Hall. Once again, after troubling, after having a really bad virtual meet and greet this past week. Uh, as explained in the video below, uh, which which I'll, I'll post on, on the Facebook um he he did not look good. Uh, he looked um, intoxicated again. He he looked sick, um, and the per- and and people in the comments noticed um, so much so that they had to make a comment on it, um, saying that Scott was being difficult. They had a late start. Um, oh, uh, he, he <laughs> this is bad. Uh, I, I didn't want to read this, but he was influenced by meds or other substances. Substances Yikes. supposedly he was trying, but he wasn't in a mental state to push through so quickly. Um, um, Kevin Nash was doing good Telling stories and cracking out signatures But Scott Hall could not do any of that And uh, he tried apologizing And uh, But Someone said that um, that We're going to take care of Scott We're going to take care of um, Going to make sure he gets what he needs He's had some issues recently It's not my business to talk about But we're not here to make him look bad We're not here to look bad in general Red what the f- uh, I I would really ho- I really don't want to say that he relapsed. I really hope that's not the case here. Well, I'll say it. Yeah, he relapsed. It's been years, bro. This dude has been sitting here oh, being good man. money, but <laughs> it's part of time. Oh, it's part of time. And he was a part of this Jake the Jake the Jake the Saint documentary. Yeah, that's sad, man. <laughs> Look. <laughs> Look, man, I'm trying. Damn. I'm trying to sit there and make it as a a. A sad thing. No, it's not sad. Listen, at the end not of the really. day, you know, once you've been accustomed to some shit, he's like, "Fuck this! I'm gonna break out of what I've been doing." He did a great. He he did great for the past what five six years. He was doing great. Yeah, he did great. But I don't want him to fall off the wagon now and fucking go back to having to go back, having to fucking be with DDP. Look at the end of the day, dudes are gonna be dudes, and they'll be like, "Yo, fuck this, yo, I can't do this for no long." Right? Yeah, but but you know, it's it's a hard game to talk about. <laughs> I love Scott Hall, man, so it sucks. <laughs> I, I laugh at it because at the end of the day, it's like, look, what more can you do? They're gonna, you know, people are gonna be themselves, and they're gonna. Go back to them to to their old ways, right? If they want to, and you know, it sucks, man. It's unfortunate. It is. It's unfortunate. Because Scott Hall is a. You watch the network. Look, man. Look. He'll come back, and then unless he he becomes these um, I don't know, abusers of <laughs> the. Yeah, you know what? Yeah, you're right. He's fucked up. <laughs> Really? 
WWE has announced that they are working on a documentary about British Bulldog Davy Boy Smith. Another fuck up. Oh, okay. <laughs> and um. All right. I'm going to take a wild guess here that they're doing this because. <laughs> Davy Boy Smith Jr. is on. A, will be in this company uh, soon. Okay. So, uh, did, were you a fan of Davy Boy Smith? Yeah, of course. I was a British Bulldog. Fan. Is he worth the documentary? Yeah. So why? But, yeah, but so, they I gotta mean, keep it real though, because they have to keep it real with the fact that he fucked up. And he explain this to me, because I inform and educate me, because I honestly don't know the, the past of Davy Boy. He was Boy. a drug addict. Like everyone else in the nineties. No, yeah, he was not. Yeah, well, yeah, 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 he, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> and um, his biggest match was at a SummerSlam with, with with Bret Hart in his home country, and he was fucking high as fuck. <laughs> and Bret had to work him through that match. That's bad. And That's that was really his old match. He smoked crack and all this shit, or whatever. Forget. Which by, which, by the way, it was confirmed. I just want to point that out that, that WWE has been filming the past five matches of Davy Davy Boy Smith Jr. at indie shows. And guess what? Davy Boy Smith was at Bloodsport, that show that we'll be talking about later on in the, in, in <laughs> wrestling rundown. And WWE officials were there recording his performance. Oh. Will they have COVID? We'll find out in the next episode of. of, of dun, um, dun, dun, your next episode of Turbuckle Tabloid. Man, fuck you. I was on, a fan of um, British Bulldog. When the fuck did you watch wrestling? Um, <laughs> Mid nineties, so yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, man. Up next to the news, um, on NXT this week, it was um, a fan was shown in the background of Van Dango and Breeze on, and Tyler Breeze, um, like the Thunderdome usually is, you know, uh, just like every other week. But unfortunately, uh, it was found out that. Um, they were using stock footage of other people, <laughs> not from that night. It wasn't; they weren't live. And actually, one of the people on the screen was from a video of her reacting to AEW Dynamite. Oh no! Nah. <laughs> Their opponent show. Um, WWE is apparently using stock footage of fans during their NXT shows. I mean, they haven't been inviting us, so who the fuck's being in this? Um. But pro wrestling super fan Jesse Davin, I don't know who the fuck she is, noticed that she was one of the people shown on the screens during this week's episode of NXT. The problem with that was that she was not watching NXT. She said that she was watching Dynamite. This would explain why WWE has not been sending out alerts to invite fans to be a part of NXT. But to be able to use somebody else when they're not watching NXT, is that a legal issue? I'm so confused with all this shit. Okay, I got. Like, yeah, like I said, I, it's. I, I, I don't because we get alerts for everybody they else. Have, yeah, but they have not been inviting NXT people yeah. for NXT. So, so who they're the using? Fuck are they, who the fuck are they inviting? They're using past footage of fans as a reaction. They're using people from like Thunder or past Thunderdomes to be. But why? Like I, I don't I, know. I, I, and the, the worst part is. Like I said, they used a woman's footage from her watching AEW. But that's ridiculous. I don't... I don't... I can't even comment on this. This sounds ridiculous. It sounds stupid. Yeah, well, I mean, clearly... Clearly... I, I, but why can't they just invite us? I joined NXT for a week. That actually would make the ratings actually go a little bit higher, wouldn't it? But... Because think about it, Everyone who's watching in the Thunderdome has to fucking be there to watch. But it, 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 it makes you think that then how the fuck have, are they putting other people on that wall if you don't get the, because I've been getting hit with invites for Raw SmackDown. Yeah, I'm over at this point. I will not be yeah, defending them. I've no been more. getting invites yeah. for them. It's like I, I first of all I was begging you guys to get on the show, mm -hmm. and now you're requesting or asking me to get on your show. Right. So what does that say? No idea. It, it's a mess. And now NXT is being suspect with the fans using past footage and shit. It just doesn't look right. I don't when know. you could easily invite people like you do for Raw, Smack, you have the algorithm, fucking use it. I don't understand that. <laughs> I mean, it's yeah, weird. weird. It's weird. Why, look at what we have here, folks. Um, ESPN's Ariel um, Helwani. Definitely Ooh. butchered that one. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> Whatever. I don't care. <laughs> Had the opportunity to get a rare interview with 
Paul Heyman. And the first thing that she asked Heyman that was bitch. why. <laughs> I, I want that answer. She, the so first bad. question she asked. That she, bitch. She asked the hard hitting questions. It's a he? Yes, Ariel It's a guy? Yes. What a Whoops. fucking queer name he got. Well, um, all right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he asked Paul Heyman why he is no longer the executive director of Monday Night Raw. Wow. The hard hitting questions right off the bat, ladies and gentlemen. And, and Heyman had to say this. He said, and I quote, I served as the, at the pleasure of the chairman, Vince McMahon, and there came a day I was no longer at the pleasure of the chairman, Vince McMahon. When I took the role of executive director, I made an agreement with Vince. I want this job as long as every morning Vince woke up, he said, thank God, or whatever deity he subscribes to, that Paul Heyman is looking after the, sto- the, the, the show on Raw. And the day that Vince didn't wake up and felt that way, I didn't want the job anymore. I've been in a similar role when Vince was not happy with me, and it's a miserable experience. I didn't want it, and apparently on that day, on that given time, uh, um, wait, on that given time and given moment, Vince didn't wake up that morning thanking whatever he wanted me to do. So we left with a smile, a handshake, and a hug. No harsh feelings, but once I realized that Vince didn't appreciate me no more, I had to walk away from the gym, from the position. So he's finally speaking out on this whole reason why he would he got taken off of that role. What do you thought about his reasoning? But this is something he dealt with before. It's it's almost uh, like uh, like a, a sadist or a sadomasochal kind of position. Um, you doing it again? Yeah. Ariel is the type of person, he his expertise is digging up old dirt and just bringing it back on um, onto the. Onto, but the, onto, the, onto, but onto still, the, the recipient is bringing up something that they. have been yeah, they, it, they've been it, dealt with. It might be relevant or it might not, but that's just that's just what Ariel does. I'm, I'm not blaming him, but I'm, yes and no. No, I'm not. He what I'm blaming, drama. what he I'm does drama. Okay, all right, all right. I'm blaming the talent because I'm sitting here with Paul. Is like, dude, you've already been there. Like you already know right. what it was. Well, that's what he said. He goes, "Listen, I made root myself with Vince day one. If 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 if, if how you felt with me last time I was doing something happened this time, I'm out." So I guess he he wanted to do the job until he was no longer but appreciated. Heyman has been dealing with. It's not like the a one or no. This happened in two thousand two thousand one, two thousand four, two thousand five. It's not anything new. So, but do you think it's a it's a legit enough reason? You think Paul maybe shot Paul in the dark? Paul has been known to be the fucking scapegoat and the fucking um the the call out of of people's bullshit when he at the end of the day he knew what it was look what he's doing right now with the storyline with fucking Roman and all this shit yeah 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 is great yeah I love it so they'll give him the the small sto- the, the small story but they won't acknowledge him for the big the big the, picture the, the big picture because they know that he could fucking Progress the 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 wrestling industry and not give Vince the fucking um the the acknowledgement that he's the one that's fucking the lead. Right. That's why he walked away. SmackDown now. I'm happy. It's bullshit because Vince was sitting there was like, "Oh, you're making my company bigger than what it should be." And fuck you, no. He's a, he's known for doing that. Yeah. It seems like Andrade's number uh, days on the main roster are numbered. Uh, Andrade, who has not been drafted to either Raw or SmackDown, <laughs> is. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I had no fucking is being reported to go back down to NXT. Uh, Andrade posting a picture of him with the NXT Championship belt, him saying "Gracias," saying "Thank you for for his memories on the main roster." Um, he has not been drafted to Raw nor SmackDown. Red, do you see this as a possible option for um, Andrade to go back to NXT? Why is that bad though? It's not bad. I'm not saying, you see I'm, what I'm not saying it's bad. Finn? I'm th- I think it's needed. I think Andrade actually would make a pretty good heel fits, over there. It actually fits. It fits him better right now because with um, Finn. Possibly being out for another six, seven weeks, right? With the um the jaw the, injury, surgery, and all that. Yeah, and can you imagine Andrade coming down and proving that he's the better uh, champion in there? And 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 and, and, and the how would it not look for him and fucking um Finn Balor to have a, a championship match going into December? 
I love these mics. This mics is awesome. <laughs> that is outstanding. <laughs> it got everything. That is outstanding. I cannot wait to play this back. ASMR on Turbo <laughs> Tablet this, this is week. Amazing. This is amazing. People gonna pop. <laughs> it sounded like a McDonald's commercial. Yeah, exactly. Uh, it's clear as fuck. Um, I think like, Turbo Tablet has stepped their game up. I guess so. Um, no, but honestly, <laughs> I think I think Andrade at NXT. I think Andrade at NXT is needed uh, right now. I think I and well, what would he be doing if he was if if, if not? But, uh, right now, you know he ain't leaving the company. Charlotte's his boot dang. He ain't leaving his wife. Well, hey, 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 well fuck from, that shit. From, from the, the 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 new stories that I heard was that he had a he had an injury that he has to need to work on. Yep. And there's a uh, uh, what the fuck? Uh, there, there's um <laughs> he has a sur- uh, minor surgery that he has to deal with, but he'll come back, and that's probably a big thing that that works for the yeah, company. Yeah, I think so. I yeah. tried it next. He's a plus in my book. Yeah. So um, you know, sometimes a, a hiccup could actually be a better a blessing look. in disguise, man. Yeah. Oh. A little bit of the bubbly. Can't wait to hear your reaction to this one, Red. It has been reported that Joey Ryan. D- don't do that. <laughs> Joey Ryan. My bad, bro. <laughs> I forgot you hate that. <laughs> jo- that's that. the one thing, yo. That's the one. I don't, yo, people can shit on my face. Damn, son. No, stop. You, you gotta shut the whole show. <laughs> no, stop. Because you're, 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 you're big neck. Stop. Joey Ryan yeah. has filed a $10 million breach of contract I got lawsuit that. I got that. against yeah. Impact Wrestling. They don't even have $10 million. Um, for what he says was a breach of contract because he was fired because of the speaking out allegations um, that alleged sexual abuse and assault. Uh, although his contract was supposed to run through August of 2021, he was released in June 20, June um, 22nd. Um, and Ryan is claiming that his contract stated that he needed to be informed of any issues in writing along with a five-day cure period. He says that that didn't happen and that he he wants all that money, man. What do you think about Joey Ryan? Which, by the way, everyone who accused him of this is saying that this is disgusting and that he should fucking rot in hell. But he's been I'm accusing. Just, just saying. He's been accusing everyone of everything. Yeah. Um, he's like the Trump of fucking wrestling. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Yo, my son, my, my, yeah. Uh, but the fact that he's fighting this, Yo, Isaac, would you book Joey war? Ryan? No. <laughs> <laughs> How about if he? What if if he came if he came back as Joseph Ryan Alcibix? He could go back to where the fuck he came from. Hold on. No, thank you. No, here's the thing. Um. He's he's really grasping at straws right now. Yeah, he really is. And, he has receipts. But ten million? Uh, he's not gonna get. But um I don't even Impact is gonna shut him up. Yeah. With maybe about two hundred thousand or some shit like they that. They don't even have that amount. No, Why they are... do. They do. No, they do. Uh, Yo, Impact has money. Yeah. Steve Harvey and fucking um Mark Cuban taste different, bro. Impact they, they have money. has money. Money. They have a big backing. And that's why, and that's why he knows he could do this fucking um lawsuit against him because yep. he knows he, he has, has money. I, I heard, do you want to hush money? I heard he yeah, had exactly. the same lawyer as uh the bro, at the Riddle. Riddle. Yeah, yeah. Same same lawyer. Yeah. So. Oh God. They'll they'll mm. give they'll give him that that hush hush. They'll yeah, give it. It's a good lawyer too. So. Why why do you think that impact is still around? This company has. I don't know. That guap. Because of the backing Yes it's Mark insane. Cuban and Steve it's Harvey insane. Are literally investing in this right now Yeah they, Steve they, Harvey They know what it is It's like listen Advertise Advertise Steve money Harvey money. says It's good But Certainly Harvey says Nah Impact He does It has been revealed this week That Eric, Tamina, Billy Kay And Zelina Vega <clears throat> Officially have new homes after not being drafted in red. I just want your quick reaction to it. It's a quick story. It's been announced that Erica the Viking Raiders has signed with Raw. And SmackDown has picked up Tamina, Billy Kay, and Zelina Vega. Zelina Vega going solo there. Andrade and Mickey James, the only people who have not been drafted in the free agent pool. What do you think about uh, those pickups there? I'm surprised that this is actually a story. <laughs> I just wanted your quick reaction. This is a real story? Yeah. 
It's a draft update, more like. It's, it's, yeah, more, it's a draft update. It's, 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 it's like, exactly. It's like, uh, okay, I, what the fuck? Don't bury my shit. <laughs> Don't bury my shit. I'm sorry. Um, it's a quick draft update. Like, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's um, I, I'm hoping they get a bigger push. Uh, who was it that fucking got signed again? Billy Kay, Zelina Vega, and Tamina uh, going to SmackDown. All right, so. all right, thanks for burying my shit. All right. Mook. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect. <laughs> ECW Arena cancels event after learning that it was for President Donald Trump. Well, wow. well. Wow. The 23. You want to hear arena? good news? I'll tell you wow. good. I'll tell you good. I'll tell you good news. Wow. You want better news? I got you with better Holy news. Holy shit. Can you give it another something that's around? <laughs> another something. The 2300 Arena, known to wrestling fans as the ECW Arena, has canceled a political event after they were aware that it was for President Donald Trump. An event named Italians for Trump was... Oh, no. So, <laughs> get, get, get. Wait, wait. <laughs> Oh, it gets better. Hosted Yo. by Ru- Rudy Giuliani. <laughs> For real? Well, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm dead ass. Oh, no. Nah. Gavols for Ga- Trump. Gavols. <laughs> um, Bacha galoop. Bacha galoops for Trump. <laughs> What's to be hosted? What's to be hosted? By Rudy Giuliani. Bunch of good loops for Trump. But as reported by the Philadelphia Inquirer, <laughs> the owners oh, God, the owners were under the impression that the evo- event was for a local politician, but it was for Trump, and they canceled how is it out. This, wait, wait, hold on. How is this? How is this a wrestling story? Because it was the ECW, ECW arena. arena. I wanted to throw it in. Oh <laughs> That's good, God. bro. I wanted to throw it in. Fuck it. Oh, shit. Um, uh, uh, bunch of galoops for Trump, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Um, ECW. For Trump. I just wanted what? to give a shout out. I wanted to give a shout out to um, our boys at the ECW oh, arena for being so strong. Oh, shit. I'm... Oh, okay, wow. whatever. Open? Wow. Yeah, I guess so. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> what else you got? Holy shit. <laughs> How is that we had a full oh, wrestling man. show with all flesh? <laughs> what the funny shit ever that he said? <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Uh, I'm weak. Okay. Um. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Oh, uh, we we said it. We said that wrestling when I was gonna be a fucking uh, shit show. Uh, it's gonna be. A shit show. Um. It has been confirmed that WWE has signed Benjamin Carter, um, uh, uprising star from AEW. Picked him up off the quick, off the humble. I'm mad because VXS should have grabbed him before he fucking he tried, and he got COVID. What were you, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, this story, this story, this story blows my mind because they took the few matches he had on Dark and leave so- him alone. <laughs> They took the few matches he had on Dark and said, I'm topping AEW's offer. How impressive does this guy have to be to, for them to do that? Listen, at the end of the day, here's the problem. Hey, we're well, not the problem. Here's, here's the, here's the um, resolution. Um, he was in AEW. He had problems because of his, his work on um, Visa and shit. And they signed him. They signed him because he's going to be in WWE's um, NXT UK form system. All right. Rollins, so he could be Rollins at home. Student. He could be at home. So he's good. Absolutely. And then they work to get him his visa better. The kid is very talented. He is very good. But here's the problem with with my thought about it. I don't really think that he's that amazing. It's too quick. Huh? It's too soon. Yeah, and the other thing is like they want they I, I think AEW and it's a clout move. WWE, they're looking for the um the Will Ospreay, um, um, Zack Saber Jr. kind of guy, right? Too quick, but you, even if you got him, and in both of their their promotions, you're not gonna do shit with him. They no, they won't. They, so, I mean, was the better signing with WWE? Yes. Yeah, NXT. It, it yeah, was. I think NXT might treat him very well. Yeah, no. The NXT UK, yeah, it's a better signing for him. Yeah, definitely. It looks out for him. Uh, but um I'm happy for him. Uh it, it, it's a better look for him. He does. Welcome to the Kevin Owens show. 
two quick um, just a uh, side note in there, and then and then I'll take it away, to give it to you, to, and then we'll close off with the main event of the the, 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 the segment. Just want to say two things. First thing, Britt Baker was on a Britt Baker was on a podcast this week, and she requested that everyone to not turn the channel when the women are on TV. <laughs> It was her request. I'm sorry. And she legit. <laughs> she said. She said, and I and I quote: "Please don't turn the channel when the women are on TV. Give us a chance." Red, what are your thoughts on that? Because I've given them a long enough chance, and they fucking suck. Okay, I'm sorry, Britt Baker. You're gob. They, most of them. Mo- yeah, thank you. Listen, most of them. I I've sat there and punished. I tried. I punished myself to give you guys the benefit of the doubt, but at the end of the day, um. I've had bowel movements that was more pleasurable <laughs> after eating fucking Indian and Mexican at the same time than watching your shit. It's terrible. And yeah, it's bad. It's bad. It's bad. And and, the, and it's just really bad. The women's division in AEW is flawed and it needs a lot of help. And the second story I just want to say, this is a funny one. Um, Matt Hardy took a jab on Twitter this week uh, after um, saying how... Y- WWE portrays the wrestlers in the back watching from the TVs. I don't know if you <laughs> that they all look the same. I just I, I found that funny. It's stupid, but whatever. Red, take it away, bro. Okay, so um, for my end, John Cena, congratulations, you got married. Yikes! You know what that screams to me? I'm, I regret leaving Nikki Bella, <laughs> and now I want to rush into a he marriage. He married a woman named Shasha Bala. Shasha, I, mean, I, I can't even pronounce her name. I don't know if I can. Yeah, I can't. Part. I know I can't. Hashtag gay. He must have. <laughs> he must have married a woman that said, "You know what? He's he I'm doesn't weird. want. He doesn't want kid. He's not gay." Okay. You think he's gay? Not you think like John no, Cena is gay? No. No. Yo, she, no. She, do I think John Cena is gay? Um, I think he likes anal pleasure. Oh, get what? the fuck out of the mind. Whatever it is. All no. right. I think what it, what, what it was was that he found a woman that said. <laughs> she don't want kids. I don't I'm want good. kids. Yeah. 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 And he, she's a businesswoman. Yep. Yay. He's a businesswoman. And then, you know what he truly told Divas as? His, his new OK Cupid profile. Because exactly it showed every right. week what he wanted yeah. in a relationship, and it wasn't kids, and it wasn't men, it wasn't any of that bullshit. I think so. he just didn't want to be in the public, dude. Um, I agree as well. The other, That's the, true. While the, uh, the Bella Twins are like the complete opposite of that. They're always on TV, and he doesn't want to be, so. Yeah, I, uh, I, totally, so I totally get it. So did the Ville, uh, her stalker actually used the... Address that, that she was at as his address. This what? fucking psycho. Oh, he should be in the the straight jacket. How the <laughs> fuck? He was using her address as his, as his home his home address. Because he's a psychopath, and he needs help. Uh, he needs um <laughs> to get shanked in his asshole. Or wow. Some shit. Okay. <laughs> oh, that's wrong. Wow. Uh, wow. Uh, Tino Sabatelli signs with NXT. Again? Again! <laughs> Again! After he was in uh, AEW and he... Well, he said, fuck that. <laughs> no, apparently he went over there, chilled out, and he said... Um, no, thank you. <laughs> and then he said some shit to the media about oh, the yeah. whole Eric Bischoff shit. He was shit. a whistleblower. Oh, what? And next he said, come on back. <laughs> you good people, man. Well, you good. All right. All right. You loyal. You loyal. Uh, shout out to Lex Luger. Lex Luger has uh, been going to... um. A diamond out of space and is working out and doing the DDP workout. Good for and him. And he's slowly progressing to work to walk around. So he's got off. What happened? He couldn't walk. Yeah, well, for years he's been in the wheelchair. What are you talking about? Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. But... Um. Unfortunately, we lost. Uh, and um, Isaac knows about this. Um, uh, British wrestler uh, uh, Ryan Smiles. We could. You can um, um, elaborate about this. Um, he was uh, really well known in the. Thank you, thank you for raising my mic, sir. Now uh, Ryan Smiles was was known for uh, not only wrestling in the in the British independent wrestling scene, but he was also a promoter of uh, I think it was Lucha Forever. Yeah, Lucha yeah, yeah. Lucha Forever. And I was a big fan of what they were doing. It's just really sad, and uh, a lot of people in, in in scene right now affected by this. Uh, you see people in NXT UK. Uh, Posting tributes about this guy is just sad, and he was like 30 years old. 
Hey, 31 and... Uh, Gone too what, soon, man. 31 and uh, what you call it, um, connected to a P. Dunn and shit. It was crazy because when Isaac put it on, I was like, who the fuck is this? And I saw his story. I was like, wow. Yeah. Depression hits every... And, and he knew everyone, everyone, too, man. Yeah. He, was, he was really close to like a lot of the guys you're seeing on TV right now. Yeah. So it's just sad. And finally, uh, sure, sure, sure. Um, since Isaac is here, um, big outbreak <laughs> in the indie scene. I mean, oh my oh god. god, what the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> I mean. Wow. The indie scene has seen a big outbreak in COVID. No. No way. No, no man. No. In Spanish, we will go, no me diga. It's like, yeah. really? <laughs> Come on, man. GCW in their uh, collective, which has been a big, uh, a big fanfare uh, for the past three or four years, has... Uh, basically brought upon a resurgence <laughs> this past month and um, by the way why would you do this during a pandemic um, Oski uh, uh, you, you didn't know anything about this right I had no idea about this story but the second I heard it I it screamed straight stupidity so what happened was is that um GCW on um, game changer wrestling has uh, a, a coalition called um the collective where they come together with other um wrestling promotions or promotions which is great because we we love to include see, everybody we love to see this <laughs> But not during a fucking pandemic. <laughs> so and wait, they, and wait, and wait, and wait, but no, they were outside, right? No, as much as we want to say that, but no. <laughs> Apparently, how many people? Uh, no, 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 wait, wait we'll wait, get wait, to wait, that. Wait, 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 wait. This was an indoor event. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Where? But which, by the way, what? Um, it was. Wait, hold on. Uh, it was an indoor event. Wait, wait, hold on a sec. During a fucking pandemic. <laughs> but Red, let me guess. Twenty people, thirty spread out, right? <laughs> yeah. No. Try again. Fifty, a hundred. No, no, no. Two no. hundred. What? Let's two hundred. Maybe three. Three. No. Let's try a nine. Fucking hundred. What? That was in a venue. And not including the talent that was in the building and the other individuals who were part of staffing. Wait, say that number again? I couldn't hear you. Right. <laughs> Close to a 900. Close to a thousand. Close to a K, Let's say boy. a thousand. Okay. A so, dollar, boy. Here we go. A buck. And, and the best part about it was because, of course, we had to have um, big names and the big names out part of, was part of that was your fucking number one PWI uh, greatest of all of 2019, 2020, and your AEW champion uh, Moxley was in a building. <laughs> uh, but, but Fred, they were all wearing who was already had been a a a individual who was. Under the whole COVID thing, because <laughs> check this out, his wife had COVID. But Red, they were all wearing masks. No, no. did they? No. Not yet. No. So what you're saying that? So what you're saying is GCW okay. was a Trump rally. Uh, I would. Uh, uh, I would never uh, say anything like that. No. no. Uh, why would? No, what I was saying would be, uh, this is a this is a wrestling uh, 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 or uh, brought uh, uh, brought together kind of uh, accommodation that should be. You know what? Fuck this! You fucking assholes! What's wrong with y'all? Nah, but they want to point fingers. 
No, 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 no. Wait. Let's get to that. Let's get to that in a sec. Yeah. What the fuck is was wrong this? with you guys? How many- you lack common sense. John Moxley, bro. Uh, they had, Mo- they had a AEW's world champ. champion on a national number television PWI show. One, but you know what? I, I'm, I'm not even, I'm not even gonna blame them for that because Mox has his own fucking um, his own agenda for that. Because you could have turned around and said, "Dude, what the fuck is going on here?" True. You had this, this. <laughs> Yo, I, I, I find this, I, I find this as. As it's a, it's it's a a chasing of clout is a chasing of Greedy. fucking mon money and and, and greed. It it yeah. really is. Let's make a dime, shall okay. we? Okay, okay. It's fucked up, man. No, I'm, I can I, I can say it. I'm, I, not, no, I'm not the one that's going. Oh, I'm be quiet. GCW. It's fucked up. No, no, no. But, I but, have friends involved that were there. No, but, you know? but not only that. It's also things to where it's like, look. Who are you looking out for in this kind of environment? Are you looking out Not for the, the, pro- the, the the promotion, or are you looking for the talent? Or are you even looking out for the fans that come to come to this? Sucks, man. And then, all right. With all that being said, you did all this, and you got called out on your bullshit. You got called out. There's so much shit. You got called out because of the 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 the. the the environment that you were in, you got called out on on the the levels of 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 hazard to that share that can be shared to everyone. But then, once you got called out to it, now you don't, you want to sit there and point fingers at everybody else, and it's like, dude, no, own your shit, own to your bullshit, <laughs> you know. <laughs> no, I'll say it, Joey Janella. You piece of shit. You piece of shit. Literally. And it's not anyone. And you know what? Call them out because they're not, they'll never be on the show anyway. <laughs> I don't give a they'll shit. Never yeah, be, that's, that's why I don't care. They'll never be on the show anyway. That's why I don't care. Um, Fuck it. Uh, uh, shame the Brett, on you. The, uh, shame the, on you. The, 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 Brett, La- the Brett Lauderdale's. Clout chases that are The, the Brett Lauderdale's. And then you want to call out individuals that, in promotions, that basically, you don't even, you listen. Check your lawn before you start trying to look at somebody else's lawn. You yep. know, check to see yep. what the fuck is going on on your fucking uh, on your area, and then shout out everybody else that didn't didn't do their due diligence. It blows my Stop mind. Stop it! It blows my mind that I haven't heard anything from anybody else's fucking um their 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 promotions, but. Yours get put out there, and now you're you, you're. You, you. <sighs> How do you have the nerve, the nerve, <laughs> the nerve, <laughs> the goal to talk <laughs> shit about someone else's show when you just created the COVID nineteen generator of professional wrestling? But not only that, uh, not yeah, only did dare you have a fucking, you. not only did how you have the, dare you, not only did you have the epicenter. A fucking COVID <laughs> indie world in 2020, but you also had other shit that came out of it. You had fucking sexual fucking oh allegations that came out. Horrible. But yet you want to fucking sit there and, <laughs> yo, oh my god, this was po- the most embarrassing moment in your company's history. Period. This is an embarrassment. We're in the middle of a pandemic, and you're treating this like a fucking like Pee Wee's Playhouse. Do me a favor. But it's a get your shit up. All right? But on some G shit, it's it's the gradual placement of listen. You take each event at a time to build your shit back up. These motherfuckers went. How the fuck do you sit there and do a collective during, during a COVID. pandemic? That's like hosting the Olympics right now. <laughs> it's like, no. <laughs> exactly. You no. know what? Yo, Oscar, you said the same shit. It's like hosting the fucking Olympics. It's like, no. At this time. Yeah. And why know why they didn't? Why? COVID! But <laughs> like and no, I, it's I, like common sense. And 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 you know, it just it, it bothers me because I know they know better. Do, 
Now I don't know. It just sucks that they didn't even like. Now uh, I don't know. They didn't even uh, make it mandatory to get tested. They too. didn't. Like, they, it they, was just like they didn't care. It's, it's clear. It was, no, what no, no, what pisses me off is clear. No, no, what pisses me off is they're gonna they, they're gonna sit there and question somebody else when you're not doing the shit. It's it, it's clear as day to me that this event was meant for two things. It was meant to make money because I'll be honest, with, I'll I'll be the first one to say it. The past few shows, and this man next to me could agree with me on it. <laughs> they have had no fucking people at their shows, and, li- and basically they've been they've been they've been talked down upon because of their lack of creativity and their in ring work. This was their way of making a couple of dimes, to, to uh, and it failed. And, and to be honest with you, I think GCW just got really bad rep, and I don't know who would want to go to a show after this. I'm not good. I'm not going. I'm I'm okay. No, no, no. They, and I'm not they, trying to shit on the entire company, but shame oh, on you. And shame have, on you. Also, I I Fuck don't even know if y'all bro. even know this, but they have another show tomorrow in Cal- <laughs> in California. And that's still going wait, on. Wait, wait, wait. And it's still going on in California North tomorrow California. with the same talent. And they haven't had a single post since the outbreak of people getting. Uh, positive of COVID. So I want to. haven't had a single post. So, okay. and they're having a pay per view tomorrow okay. in California. Okay, so okay, That's still okay, going so, okay. On. So I want everyone to l- listen to my words right now. Yeah. If that show can, goes on tomorrow, cutting a promo or whatever the fuck, I'm, I'm going. We're doing a round this fucking show. Fans if, are like, don't tom- do it, bro. bro yeah, tomorrow, fans are going in. if they do that show tomorrow, and I see people work when they don't even know if they have COVID or not. Yeah. After they, what just happened? Expect the biggest rant. On this show it next week, even be a, expect going on. expect the hell raising bells to be ringing next week because I am going to go ham on this shit. It'll be half of wrestling rundown next week. Mark my words. It's insane and it's irresponsible. Mark my words. And it's greedy and it's selfish and you just I'm hoping, shouldn't be fucking running another show a week after COVID Central. You know? I'm hoping Jiminy Cricket hopped on Brett Lauderdale's shoulder and told him to cancel tomorrow. <laughs> but, but, but we'll find out. We'll find the fuck out. But here's the problem. You know why? Here's the problem <laughs> is because politically they have allowed people to do this because they think that this is not a big issue. Why not the leader in chief doesn't wear one, so listen, my whole thing is like, look, bro, you can say what you want about this, but if you shut down business and people sit there and go, Yeah, it, you know, it's super flu. Or whatever case it is, but at the end of the day, this is a shutdown of business. Government has told you, yo, we need to shut this bullshit down, and you don't fucking acknowledge it. You're a fucking asshole. That's the worst part. You don't even acknowledge it. You don't fucking acknowledge Shame it. You're an on asshole you. for it. Shame. And you got fans coming back home fucking You're COVID wrong. positive. It's not cool, dude. You're lying. And regardless of how you take it or how to, you're still Whoa. passing it to other people. You still, yep. we we're fucking, we should have been done. Look, <laughs> we should have been done with this shit yeah. early on in the year, yep. and we should have been done with it. People but why are because we? Because people, people don't want to listen. Because no, because people think they're bigger than everything. We should have been done. And I was like, oh, the second wave. You know what the second wave is? Ignorance. It's People don't fucking don't know how to follow through with the shit. The second wave is ignorance. Okay? Uh, it's the third wave. Sure. Whatever it is, you you know what? If I and, and Isaac knows some of the talent and, and if if I find out they all got COVID and but but which by the way, Moxley just wrestled against Lance Archer. Just wanna point that out. Um this I week. hope he got COVID. I swear to God, I hope he did. Uh, Wowzers. Yeah, um, you know why? And you know why? Because you shouldn't have been there. You shouldn't have been there. <laughs> You shouldn't have been there. This turned upside down quick. You shouldn't have been there. <laughs> Stupid ass. Ouch. It's it's bananas, bro. Like, <laughs> wow. You should have got COVID. It's serious. And you got sexual wow. assaulter in your fucking show, dude. It's she got cool, fucking dude. COVID. Yes. Fuck that. Fuck that. But other than that, yo. <laughs> fuck them and fuck no, 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 Logan no. Stunt. Don't- Wow! <laughs> oh, wow! Wow! Other than that, this and Marco, fuck and Marco I like Stein. Wheaties. All yeah, right, and we're done. And I'm done. Yeah. And um, guys, when we come back, we have um around the square circle and <laughs> See, wait, 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 fuck oh. Lorenz Dean too. Whoa! Whoa. Oh, no, what are you talking about? No. What, did, <laughs> what did he do? Give you a shitty box? Yes. Oh, yes. Uh, no, Isaac. Where's Isaac. my mask? Someone <laughs> literally sexually assaulted someone. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. Guys, when we come back, we have a round square circle and, and more than that. So, uh, <laughs> check it out. <laughs> Fuck, what the hell? What's going on?
going on, everybody? As you know, this is Matt Olski from Turnbuckle Tabloid, but when I'm not here talking wrestling, uh, I have another hobby, which is collecting Funko Pops. So uh, if any of you guys want to check out my new page, The Funko Hub on Instagram, we promote Instagram Live, sales, raffles, and just talk about anything Funko related, uh, what you're collecting, what I'm collecting, and supporting the community at its finest. So guys, check out The Funko Hub on Instagram uh, for all your Funko needs and uh, to support the Funko community together. It almost, it, almost, it almost makes you cry when you hear that shit. Yeah, nah, it's it's definitely, I think it's the best uh, guitar piece, solo piece ever made, in my opinion. Yeah, uh, that was, but it's, it's I mean, the, the the man was a magician with the with the, with the guitar, and insane, insane. There's not going to be anyone like him. And the fact that he's not in some people's top three lists really disappoint me. How the fuck does that happen? How do you not have Eddie Van Halen in top shit? Not one, Okay. I'm sorry, I love Jimi Hendrix, but he's a number. He's number two for me. Uh, nothing fucking beats Eddie Van Halen. If anyone has that argument, just play Eruption, and you and, and and it'll be it'll be a debate over. Okay. Uh, yeah, honestly, it was, it was fun, fun, uh, fun debate that we had. Uh, conversations we had. We also brought into that uh, underrated guitarist as well when we talk about um, uh, yep. um, Sinister Gates. So that was another uh, name to throw in there as well. But uh, other very that, underrated. Very, yeah. That's that's your that's your people's. You're you're a Venice Sevenfold fanboy. Hell yeah, I love that tattoo on my back for a reason. It's my uh, shit. Around the square circle, ladies and gentlemen. Shout out to everyone who's been listening to the episodes and downloading. You guys have been been tracking some stuff. Uh, basically, we we're getting a large following in India, and that's uh that's something. Wow. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I got you. Got to learn how to say thank you in Punjabi. I know, right? We gotta like we gotta like start adapting to different languages. Yeah, but uh, other than that, uh, as we do every week here on Turnbuckle Tablet, Around the Square Circle is basically the wrestling uh, review of what we we watch, listen to, and part partook in uh, in wrestling and what we were a part of. So, uh, what, what do you have on your end? What did you uh, What did you uh, partake in this week? Um, besides the week in wrestling, I. I watched a couple of videos on YouTube just going over um, some top 10 lists. Um, Got to give a shout out to Brian Zane for um, doing the top 10 worst face turns of all time. And, of course, Randy Orton's on that list. A, a, a face Randy Orton is a face that is, is, is a Randy Orton I never want to see, and I'm happy that he highlighted that. Uh, a few more interviews with Chris Van Vliet this week with Chris Jericho, um, which, Red, I think you should definitely take give a listen to that because – I think everything that comes out of Chris Jericho's mouth lately is controversial. So uh, having him, having Chris Van Vliet have him on the show was 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 a great great listen. Uh, Jericho really Jericho, which I don't know if you agree with it. Jericho said that he was the best, that he was truly in his best form of wrestling. Fourteen that, wait, years that, after his debut. Sorry, sorry, what was that again? I said on Chris Van Vliet's interview with Chris Jericho, he stated that. He felt like he was the best Chris Jericho of all time. Like he was at his greatest, his peak, fourteen years later in the game. I can see that. So if you if you do the math, I mean, fourteen years after, what time did he? What year did he debut in wrestling? I mean, uh, he said thirty. It's been thirty years, so he's been like the nineties, nineteen ninety. He said he was at the he was the best, like mid early two thousands. What do you think? Um, he said, "Yeah, that, that, that's just that sounds what you- about right." You know, because he was still a young, a young lion, uh, coming up in in um in in um 
Mid not mid south and um oh my god I forgot the one that Cornette was running oh shit well well th there and um oh Smoky Mountain sorry and Smoky you know, Smoky Mountain then when he went to Japan he talked about how you know he was still getting his his chops uh, put together even even he had some really shitty matches out there comes to WCW he starts hitting his stride a little bit more but it wasn't until he got into WWE and WWF at the time where he fucking blew up. And, yeah. And yeah, he was that he was at his pinnacle there, right? So you know, he talked he talked about that. He talked about a few other things. I suggest going to take a listen to it. Whoever whoever's listening to the show, please go listen to it. But besides that, I know Red Red. I know you want to talk about Jim Cornette because supposedly he was not happy or something this week. Well, um, for what I well, it was a well, let's see, it was a couple of things. I have to check my notes quick because you know I do shit like that. I do. I take notes now. Ain't that something? Wow. I'm well, sure. What a world. Well, I, I just bought. A, I just bought a. I just bought something to help me with that. So I'm, I'm not sure. There you go. <laughs> um, Cornette this week on the experience he discussed about. Uh, there was a banter going back and forth with uh, Twitter followers and such with Dave Dave Meltzer, which once again Meltzer has been finding a ways. To put his foot in his mouth and also listen, and for people who are new to this show or don't understand my basically position with Meltzer, your uh, hatred. It's not even a hatred. It's to a point to where I've known for years that this guy is, a, is full of shit. I've known it for years. This is a guy who, fine, he got in. He um he he got into the know of. Of what you know, wrestling, classic wrestling, got into you know, rub shoulders with guys, and, and people respected his opinion, which is great. That's you know, when you when you're part of the media, when you're part of what we do, you actually do want to get a nod from you know, wrestlers, promoters, bookers, and such, and say, hey, you know, this guy may not have taken a bump in the ring or done that, but you know, he knows what he's talking about, and you know, yeah, that that helps. Yeah, and I think you're, it shows that your your work is being validated. Right. So, so. I'm um. I'm 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 more of the idea with Melter was that for the longest time I said yeah he's a mark for himself, but he's also I've also felt that he's put you know he was put he put way too much importance on himself and what his thought was and what things were and it's like okay I get it you know that's what you that's what you do you know this is wrestling that's what it is but it it all it almost became. It almost became a, a a a following, whereas you know you got guys like fucking the Young Bucks and fucking Omega and all these guys they 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 almost looked at his opinions as though like if it was gospel and it's it's it, it was ridiculous. I never, I could never, I never understood that. I never got it. And then now when you see these days his rating system, which is it, it, it's meaningless now, it means nothing. Yeah, it doesn't mean shit. It doesn't mean shit. You give you give fucking a tag team match on. AEW Dynamite's uh, main event a week ago, I fucking four star ratings, but you didn't even want to give the four. I think it was like a four two five or four or, or four and a half to Balor versus uh, uh, O'Reilly. Are you? What are you fucking? What are you talking about? You barely didn't. You you didn't want to do that. Right. So, you know, it was almost as though that like, you had to do it because you knew somebody in 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 in. Twitterverse or whatever the fuck was gonna say something. So this week <laughs> on the experience, <laughs> so on uh, the experience, uh, they were going back and forth on the Twitter. Uh, people on Twitter were going back with Meltzer talking about how you know, I, you can't listen. Cornette is a fucking miserable man, and and you know he's setting his ways. It's understandable, but what's right is right. What a lot of times is what he's saying, especially with AEW, he said, he says, listen, I didn't want this company to fail. I actually wanted something to look forward to in wrestling. Cause we, we were tired of the drudgery that was going on with WWE. Right. We wanted something new and fresh, but he says, I called it out. You know, these, these, these guys that's in there, the promotion, the booking and everything, it, they're, they're doing everything as backwards. So Meltzer just complained. We was going back and forth with the, the, the Twitter guys. And it was saying that, uh, you know, basically, in, in paraphrasing, but basically that Cornette is out of touch. Uh, he couldn't book his way back into the business in such like in way. And Jericho jumps in talking about how you know if they were gonna hire somebody to do legit booking, it would be like Mike Tanay or some shit like that. And it's it's ridiculous because Cornette says, "Well, I won Booker of the Year in the last twenty years, uh, twice. I won it twice. 
You got your own magazine gave it to me. And, you know, and the only person that, that, that equated that to do it twice was Vince McMahon. But then the other thing he was talking about was um, Ring of Honor and how, uh, you know, he, he held back a lot of talent on Ring of Honor. And um, Cornette is like, what are you talking about? The guys that we had either left and became stars because of Ring of Honor or we for showcased them to you know the best the best of our abilities. Look, look look at you know the Adam Coles, the the the, the Seth Rollins, who was Tyler Black, um, the, the Kevin Steens, Kevin Owens, El Generico, who Sami Zayn. All these guys were during his era in Ring of Honor were pushed to the moon. Yeah, they really were. Yeah, but the only thing is because he wasn't a fan of the Young Bucks bullshit or Kenny Omega's bullshit. You know, Melta has uh, takes offense to it. And here's the big question I want to ask you. Do you think that Meltzer's getting paid by AEW and these guys? Wow, that's a good question. That's a good question. Uh, that's a controversial question. Um, I'm going to have to go with no. I don't think he's being paid by AEW, but I do think he wants to get paid by AEW. I think he's really trying to, to, to swing home swing home a, a deal to get some money over there by them. I think I even think AEW wants I think I even think he wants to be signed as a as a booker and as creative in the back. I swear to God. He wants he wants some gig at AEW because uh even but even Cody said it on Twitter. He was like, yo, we don't we don't care what Dave Meltzer says. He's irrelevant. Like That's a uh, lie. Like, That's so much of a lie. I, 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 but, it, it's, but it's a lie. Yeah, first. it's a lie. But uh I don't think he's being paid by AEW. I think he wants to, so Hmm. Yeah, so you- I, I I think if, if it's not a payment thing, it's it's something that we've learned in the past couple of, of years right now with the quip pro quo kind of um aspect. But you know, when I don't see a reason to why you keep lathering this company up that is nowhere near to what you preferred years ago. Like you you want to sit there and compare this to J- to Japan and such and this is nowhere near Japan. No, this this wrestling is not what what Japan works on. If you've been watching the, the G one Cl- uh, climax these past couple of weeks, like the, it's it's nowhere in comparison. Japan would probably look at all elite and, and beat the shit out of all these guys for doing dumb shit like this. Right, bro. I it's, agree. It's, it's 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 ludicrous to even to have this mindset. So the Meltzer who loved the Mid South, the NWAs, the uh, the early days of of WCW. The man who 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 followed and and was in that whole world of of the the, the territories kind of, of of wrestling now enjoys this. I don't know. That shit is fucking weird. It's suspect. Yeah, it's it's weird. Also, I listened to the Art of Wrestling this week with Colt Cabana. This week he had uh, Joey Janela. Oh, Joey Janela. Wow. We now we could talk about how much of a real fucking prick this kid is. Oh my lord. Is that bad? Listen, after we what we discussed on um wrestling rundown and also just his his, his whole you could you you want to say that th- th- this kid is um I don't know, playing the role, living the gimmick. But from what I've heard numerous times from many different wrestlers and many many guys in the back, the guy really is a prick. Like he really is an asshole. Who, Joey Janela? Oh, I don't yeah. like him. And yeah. as much as I as much as I want to joke and say Joey Janela's a piece of shit, like he really is. Yes, and um, and the conversation he was having in um in the art of wrestling, he he tries to come off. As is, as he's this humble, laid back. Uh, I'm, I'm the, I'm the, I'm the, 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 the fans wrestler kind of guy. But there's a, there's an air of smugness about him. And it's funny because the, the conversation that they had early on was when they went to Japan. He, he and I'm um, Jimmy Lloyd, and they were talking about the Ribera jackets, which is funny because we, we guys, you got to check out the episode of uh, Jumbo Tabloid where Jimmy Lloyd is on, and we bust his balls about the Ribera jackets. And uh, they, we, because, it, because it, wasn't, it wasn't earned. But it was true, though. It, 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 he actually said it. Janela said it on the show how it happened. It's like they basically ran off because they give away so many Ribera jackets now. It's pointless. They're, they're not 
It's not. Yeah, an honor no, it's it's it, it's a, it's a, it's official for everyone who doesn't understand the Robert Jack gimmick. It doesn't. Though, if you own that jacket, it means nothing anymore. Yeah, it used to be a rite of passage to get that. Just a quick rundown for you guys who don't know the Robert Jackets is basically there's a there's a there's a uh, restaurant in Japan. It's a steakhouse where wrestlers will go. Uh, after an event or during a, a wrestling uh, event season, and they go to the restaurant, and many times they will go just to eat because apparently they have great steaks. That's you know that's that's the thing they have there. But the owner right. is a big wrestling fan. He's a humongous wrestling fan. You go to the restaurant, and they have tons of pictures and autographs with wrestlers from all over. You know, everyone, everyone. And if he recognized you as a great wrestler, or he saw your matches, and he would go out and get you their jacket. Now, their jackets used to be a big deal, but yeah. now it's like, I heard that, that Jimmy has two. Jimmy Lloyd has two. Of eBay? <laughs> <laughs> no, apparently. Sorry, they, sorry. They gave him two. So that goes to show you the the, the 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 level of importance now to get the, these jackets. I mean, yeah, even, Batista I mean, had a, yeah. Batista had a he he spoke about how honored he was when he got it, and this was like back in two thousand eight two thousand nine, and where he was he said I didn't even think I deserved it, but after the 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 following that I got in Japan and the appreciation of of, of the matches that they saw me in, you know, it, it at that era it was rare to get it. Now these guys are getting fucking Rivera jackets and they're selling them shits on eBay for real though. Like they really are. And that's Batista talking, yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah. Not one Come of the on, most man. prolific wrestlers in business, but he was honored to get one because they recognized him at that time. Right. Um so but it basically said it was true. We were busting his balls talking about anybody gets that jacket, them shits is cheap, whatever. But Janela confirmed it by saying, yo, they actually had to run and get him one because they give so many out. They actually, I think they gave him and, and Jimmy Lloyd one in an alleyway or some shit. It, they used to do like a big presentation. I think um, I think in the WWE Network they had, I think it was a good, uh, the Good Brothers had uh, a, a, a mini doc. And they showed them getting presented with a Rivera jacket. So it's, Really? Yeah, yeah. So it's it's funny. It's funny that that we joke with them about about that shit, and it's fucking true. That it, 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 it's cheap. It's bullshit. Yeah, no, I, I I always knew there was a catch. There's no way Jimmy Jimmy Yang Yang Jimmy Yang Yang or Jimmy Lowered <laughs> would get a legit fucking jacket. But they, you know, the other thing too is that they like that. You know, Japan likes that death match shit. So as long as you look like you were bom- you almost killed yourself, they'll fucking respect you and throw you a jacket. <laughs> If you got the Matt Tremont bubble on your forehead, you're getting a jacket. <laughs> exactly. That's how that works. The Matt Tremont bubble. <laughs> the Matt Tremont bubble that you want to just poke with a sword. Oh, that shit is ridiculous. That's gross. Um, yeah. But, yeah, uh, and other than that, I, I also have to say, I love you guys at What Culture. I think you guys are fucking cool. I, I watch your oh. top ten lens. I love, I love your ups and downs and all that shit. But you really need to stop fucking kissing all elite's ass. You got to stop that you have to be honest be honest this is just dreadful simon miller you're you're a cool fucking dude people love you and everything and but you need to stop kissing their ass it's almost like you're doing this just to get a job it's it's almost they're pulling the dave Meltzer fan exactly it's almost it's almost sad it's getting there but, well, you know, I think this goes for any company, regardless of wrestling or not. When a new company's in town, it's the hottest thing. Everyone's going to suck beef to get the connections needed to join the the new train. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So that's, sort of, no. that's the unfortunate. But other than that, uh, yeah, it's pretty much been my, my week of wrestling and uh, catching up on shit. So what we have the cards first? All right. Well, let's, uh, let's go to Monday Night Raw. Monday um, Night Raw. We had part two of the draft, and um, the Fiend was the first pick to Raw. Red, what do you think about the Fiend and Alexa Bliss going to Monday nights? I love it. I love every minute of it. The only thing I have to say about uh, Bliss is she needs a mask. Yes, she does. Yeah, she needs a mask. Well, yeah. I think, I think, I think, I think they're legitimately making one. I think they are in the process of making one. I know so. gotta... Um. Um, yeah, so the Fiend and Alexa are going to Raw. That was the big move of the night. Um, Nikki Cross is also on Raw, which I'm not a fan of because yeah, man, what the fuck was that about? Uh, it, it makes it, it, I understand now because 
like I said, Billy Kay and like all the other mooks are on SmackDown. Like, they, like SmackDown got four m- more women included at the end of the draft. Right. Uh, so I guess they had to equal it up. Uh, whatever. It, it, it fucking annoying. Um, but the night starts off with um, once again Randy Orton and and, and Drew McIntyre beating the shit out of each other. Um, you know, I, I just. Am I the only person who I love these guys? I love Drew. I love Randy. But I'm just getting stale with this. Let's beat the shit out of each other every week with no difference. What do you think? Yeah, it's, I think it's I think it's finally running its course. I think it's it's gotten to that point to where um, they I don't think they're really finding their niche to what's gonna be the next angle to work on. Uh, like Randy, know. Randy should Randy should fly to Scotland and punt his dad. <laughs> funny because you say that shit, and that would probably be the next thing that they do. It's fucking hilarious. And pump, pump the pops, you know what I'm saying? Right. Like, that's like next level. Uh, they've already done the injury <laughs> angle. Be fucking and hilarious. I, he punched the shit out of dad. Yeah, like why not? Like pull the edge when he smacked the shit out of John Cena's pops. Like you yeah. know, get get personal because we all know Randy's winning the belt. There's no way three times he loses. Yeah, I was about to say, okay, dude, the- I was about to say, dude, we've been saying that shit for how many fucking pay per views? <laughs> I, it's coming. It's coming. I know it's coming. I don't know if it's this show. It's it's coming. So uh, that happened on Raw to start the night. Then we started the draft. Like I said, uh, the Fiend is going to Raw. Um, I'll do the I'll do the draft update at the end of the show. Uh, at the end of the, uh, that because it's not my notes for Raw, so I'll do it at the end. Uh, also, what, ha- what happened on Raw this week was uh, Miss TV. Uh, the first Miss TV. Um, uh, <laughs> Um, what do you? Uh, I'm not gonna ask you on this. So I'll just speed through it. Miz and Morrison um, invite um, Dana Brooke, Dana Brooke, and um, Mandy Rose, which I know you're a fan of Dana Brooke, but her mic work is terrible. Of course, please listen. Sometimes you just gotta go. Shh. Let's not trope. speak. Let's not speak, ladies. Let's not speak. Yo, on some real shit. Like I don't want to sound sexist, but I would give like I would make Val Venus or their their man. I, I, they need them. They need them. They need. If they want to go over, they need someone to talk for them because they neither of them could talk. Mandy's a little bit better, but Dana is just. Wow, bad. Well, like I said, uh, I said the sexiest tag team in fucking wrestling right now. Yes, so. Uh, both blondes. It's Vince's idea. You know that. Uh, so, Miz and Morrison. Um, people say Miz and Morrison together are awful. What do you think? Do you think they're starting to get a little bland? No, no. They, I, no I, 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 I still rock with them. So, Miz and Morrison do the talk show, and all of a sudden, Lars Sullivan comes out oh, and God. beats the shit out of both of them again. Uh, Vince really loves people who flirt with people who are married uh, i guess and big juicy men um sounds like donald trump but, but anyway um you know you know um, <laughs> Lars sullivan beats them both up and ends the segment uh, Ro- uh mandy rose and dana brooke defeat natalia and lana uh, a tag team match that, that started the drama once natalia and lana came during the Miz tv um natalia and lana are finally done the bell the, the church bells can ring the epic failure of this terrible pairing is done, and I can't be happier. Uh, I'm done. I'm over Lana. Um, I think she should get fired. I think Lana is the biggest waste of talent I've ever seen in my life. I, th- I don't even think she has talent. Um, and hot take, hot take. I don't care. I hate Lana. I think she needs to go. I think her niche is not wrestling. It's something else. Um, but Rose and Dana Brooke beat them there, and they split up. Kevin Owens defeats Aleister Black as both of them go to SmackDown. Um, Red, um, real quick, um, do you think the draft was just let's switch storylines from shows and see if the ratings change? That's what it would. That and it's funny you said that because that's exactly my thought process when I saw this happening. I go, oh, okay. Now you just want to carry this over because apparently people are not watching both shows at you know at the same right. time. So now right. you want to. Continue the storyline. It's it's it, be honest. It's just it's lazy. Every, it's, it's lazy booking. It's, it's every feud: Rollins and Mysterio to SmackDown, Aleister Black and Kevin Owens to SmackDown. The only thing, the only stories that haven't switched places were the main world champions. Everywhere else, they've gone to the separate different shows. It's an absolute. It's lazy booking, and it's just stupid. Yeah, it's lazy booking. And, and let me tell you, when when the show started, I was actually excited by the. Um, I was actually excited by the um, uh, 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 the way that they were building up the draft. I was I was really I, I was having hope for what was going on. I was like, okay, this is this makes sense. I I, I like what's going on here. 
I liked it. And then you saw the scene, uh, uh, Titus O'Neil, uh, uh, Carol Tazawa. What the fuck is this? What a waste. What a fucking waste. What the fuck is this? What a waste of draft picks. Titus O'Neil, the man who hasn't been seen on TV besides Raw Underground in years. Um, which basically, you know, come on. Like, it was just, it was extremely stupid. Uh, it, was, it didn't make any sense for me. Um, but Kevin Owens defeats Aleister Black here. I'm assuming they're going to continue their feud on SmackDown. But um, uh, I, we'll see how that goes on SmackDown. We had um, the New Day defeating Do- um, Robert Roode and Dolph Ziggler um, in a tag team match. Xavier Woods was awesome in this match. I, I, I'm actually—I don't know if you have you have, do you notice that Xavier Woods is looking pretty swole. Yeah, yeah, he did. I've noticed it even on the up, up, down, downs where I saw. I was like, oh shit, he's been working out a lot. Look at him, good. Yeah, yeah. he spent his rehab properly, and I'm happy to see it. New Day win, defeat Rude and Ziggler here. Um, star of the match was definitely Xavier Woods, mm-hmm. and um, couldn't uh, you know? I'm not, I'm not mad at it. I'm not mad at it at all. Um, throughout the night, um, Ricochet walks up to the the Hurt business, saying that he wants to be squashed with the with the Hurt business. He wants to be done. He does not want to be associated with them no more, and he wants to move on to bigger and better things. Because Ricochet was once again drafted to Raw. Red, he's he Ricochet is SmackDown man. Oh yeah, definitely. And that that was probably the biggest disappointment that uh, of the draft was the fact that he didn't move and. Um, it would have been a better and bigger look if he'd have left. But, but, I like the stipulation. I like the way that they were going with it. I did, too. It. I, like I was the hyped as fuck for it. Yeah. I like the thought process of them saying, you know, um, you know, I, I want to end this because I already know Apollo's leaving. So, yep. uh, let's get this over. And I, I, I like the setup for it. It was, it, was, it was smart. Yes, absolutely. And I think this gives Ricochet an opportunity that, which, spoiler alert, he won the match. Um, he defeated Cedric Alexander. The stipulation was um, if Ricochet won, the Herb business leaves him alone. And if he lost, he joins him. Mm. Um, I wanted him to lose because I think a little, I think him and the Herb business for a little bit would be great. And for him to destroy it from the inside, it would have been awesome to see. But um, shout out to Ricochet pulling an Eddie Guerrero and pretending, pretending to get hit by the chair. MVP slid into the ring. Right? You have I to just, you pop you know, for that. I, I, know I, I did. love it. I love that. But it had to be done. There's another way. Another there's there's another way of doing it. I think Eddie made it work tremendously. Well, no one does it better than Eddie, right? But even the way that it was set up and how it, it, it too much time. Uh, Cedric was on his feet. He could have ran out the ring when he saw him with the chair. But it, it, when Eddie did it, it was more like it was quick, instant, and. Um, I don't know. It's just something to, with the way that Eddie did it that made it work. But I did like the I like the paying homage to Eddie by doing that. Oh yeah. So uh, Ricochet wins, but it was by the DQ. So I think they they actually might continue this feud. Unfortunately, uh, <laughs> I want Ricochet. I want Ricochet to be in the U.S. Championship race, but uh, we'll, we'll 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 eventually see. Uh, also, we had Angel Garza defeating Andrade. The, the the match that everyone's been looking for. The 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 breakup between the team. And on Angel Garza won with these guys. It wasn't even close. Um, Zelina was out for commentary, and um, and Angel Garza won really quick. But what happened after was the true highlight of Monday Night Raw. Uh, Red, before we continue, and I and I, and I say what happened. Um, where does the future lie for Andrade? I think he's actually going to go down to NXT, and I think the better booking would be. Well, first of all, before we do that, by the way, um, did you did you see what the fuck happened with the bat, the tag belts? Put me on. Tell me. They actually switched it. They bumped into yeah. each other. And they switched it. Yep. They just did the. They I did. Said, the, they did. I said that that would have been the thing to do. Yeah, but that shit is so lazy. It is. You know, hey, let's just switch it. Yeah, let's just they, switch it. They just ran into each other. And it was like, give them your belts, and you give them their belts, and that was it. I was like, yeah, that pretty much signed that filled that pretty much filled it up. There you go. What what a what a WWE move. Right. Um, that um, was so fucking stupid. As for uh, I found Andrade, that so lazy. As for Andrade, the I I like the idea that Andrade goes back down to NXT. And since Finn is going to be out for, you know, six weeks, as they say, that Andrade comes in as a fake champion. And, and I, I think I think there's a story to tell there, Red. I think there's a story that Andrade and Finn Balor could both say that we're, um, I'm the best person who, who on, from both brands. Right. I'm the person right. who can own on the main roster and own on NXT. And Finn Balor goes, no, well, I did that first. Right. That's a story to tell. Mm-hmm. And it makes sense. So uh, I, I'm all for it. Um, but like I said, after we get 
Alexa Bliss and The Fiend giving dual sister Abigails to Andrade and Zelina Vega. Like I noted before in Wrestling Rundown, Zelina Vega is on SmackDown now by herself. And in, and Andrade is going to NXT, in my opinion. So what do you think about The Fiend and Alexa Bliss, Um, that moment there? Because people are saying that was the highlight of the night. Oh, yeah. And it looked great. It um, It's comp- it's, 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 it's compelling story. This is something that we know that Bray has been putting together for ye- for years, you know, yep. especially pairing Alexa with all this. And it's it's listen, is the Joker getting his Harley Quinn? And it, it's 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 making it's making it's elevating them. But yep. the question will be where and who are they going to be going head to head with from here on out? Well, we'll find out. I would love to see a, a, a project with Jeff Hardy. What do you think about that? That could be interesting. That can be interesting. They're on the are same we, brand. Are, are we gonna get um Willow and the Wisp? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and I'm uh, and and it, it it paints it paints it paints the picture for itself. Do you remember the first uh, time you seen Willow? Weapon? Do you ever seen uh? Do you ever you remember the first time you seen Jeff Hardy pull out that Willow gimmick? Of course, shirt? with the umbrella. Yeah, it was terrible. <laughs> it's like what the fuck is this? It was Jeff Hardy's drug dream. Anyway, um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, am I gonna am I wrong? Um. <laughs> Um, also, I want to point out Apollo Cruz was uh, officially drafted to SmackDown, and people are liking it for one reason, and it's not only because he's away from the Hurt business. Supposedly, Paul Heyman is a huge Apollo Cruz fan, and um, I think and people said Paul Heyman was actually the reason why they gave Apollo Cruz the U.S. belt in the first place oh, on okay. Raw. So, for him to go over to SmackDown with his f- favorite teacher might be a good look for Apollo Cruz. So, positive positive vibes there. I hope everything works out. We got the dual brand battle royal with all the women fighting for a chance to face Oscar next week, and the winner was Lana. Up um, next, we have Ron. <laughs> so, no, no, we're. <laughs> Bruh, fuck that. Uh, <laughs> that. That's some fucking disaster. And the fact that they're even doing this is a troll. Um, uh, so up, up next, we had Seth Rollins coming out to say goodbye to the Raw audience as Rollins has been drafted to SmackDown and said there's no one who could really step up and be their leader. Jeff Hardy interrupts and says that Raw's ring is his now. Uh, AJ Styles interrupts, laughing at Rollins, and he took exception. Hardy kicking them both and said, a tr- oh, by the way, shout out to Jeff Hardy for that great botch. He said triple threat tag team match. That was fucking <laughs> phenomenal. That was phenomenal. But I will say, match of possibly the week? That triple threat match was amazing. What do you, uh, Red, uh, you enjoy, You had to enjoy that triple threat. Oh, yes, definitely. I, and, and this is what I'm saying. When you have, when you have talent like that in the ring, you, 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 you know that Raw could actually get better from here on up. Like, Agreed. It, I, I, they have the talent for it. They yeah. have the talent. They just need to write the, the blueprints. Right. And and these are these going to be the, these one shots. And shout out to AJ who gets his Monday nights because now he go watch his son play football on Fridays. Yeah, there you um, go. But it, 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 if, if, you give, if you give them the proper matches to go forward with and to build stories with, they'll, they'll write it themselves. They, they know how to put it together. Yeah. They're artists, in my yeah. opinion. Uh, they, they, you know, they do what they got to do. So uh, it was a great match, but we had the return of Elias blasting Hardy in the back with the guitar, and of course Styles took advantage, and Styles picks up the win. Uh, there, um, the return of Elias is, is intriguing. I mean, I never, I, I'm a heel Elias. I'm happy with. Uh, if we're gonna have to have Elias on the on the roster, he might as well be heel. Um, Brian Zane Elias, I hope he's on your list for the worst face turns of all time because he, Elias as a face makes zero sense. Yeah, I never, I never, I never really was a fan of that face shit. But I mean, I'll tell you one thing: he's never been one of those guys that I didn't like or I got turned off of. I just thought yeah. that, um, like you said, the face, the face Elias wasn't working, and um, as a talent, he's he, the guy can work. He can work, and I'm happy to see him come back. He's having a concert next week, and. Um, and we'll see where it goes there. We'll see where it goes there. But I'm happy to see um, AJ Styles pick up the win in this match, and Elias coming back um, is definitely something to be happy about. Can't be can't be mad at that. Um, uh, and and uh, I, I'm, I'm I'm drawing a blank here how Raw ended. Uh, I think it was with the main uh, event, the women's main event. That's what it was. Oh yeah, sorry. It was yeah. it was the the women's main event, which was Lana and the whole bullshit. So. Yeah. 
Uh, that was Raw. What do you think about Raw this week, man? I thought it was an enjoyable episode for for the most part. Yeah. There were some boxes there, but it was okay. For the for, for the night that I actually am off from work, I was able to watch Raw. I I was I was entertained. I had a good. I, it's it's a rare occasion when that that occurs, when I could be off and watch Raw and not have to uh, uh, speed through it or or get the the um the the highlights and stuff and watch it and actually enjoy it. Right, right, and can you believe it? I actually enjoyed it. All right. Um, going to NXT here is we had Undisputed Era opening up the show with not Adam Cole holding the mic, but Kyle O'Reilly. What do you think about them giving Kyle O'Reilly that middle captain kind of vibe here, doing the main promo for the team? Well, he had to do it because uh, supposedly isn't Cole supposed to be like still out or some shit like that? Or I guess, but yeah. I think Kyle O'Reilly looked great. Right. I, I also like the shift. Let the shift happen. It's okay. I know we had Red Dragon and we loved him. We loved Bobby Fish and Riley, but I think it is time. It's time to shift to give um Roderick time more tag team time. And let, yeah, and I let think Kyle, so well. um, Let Kyle flourish as a singles. Exactly. You're stable. You're stable. Mix it up. Right. Uh, Kyle Riley joined Bobby Fish and Roderick Strong ringside for their number one contenders match against Only Lorcan and Danny Birch. Um, and Undisputed Era won, and it's, and we'll be getting Undisputed Era versus Breezango. We already know who's winning that shit. Um, for the <laughs> for the NXT Tag Team Titles in the near future, I'm happy to see it. Um, but Fish and Strong versus Bur- um, um, Birch and Lorcan was actually fun. Yeah. I love Danny Birch and, and Oni Lorcan. They just something's missing. There's a missing um, pep ingredient to make them go over the moon. I don't, don't know if it's because it, it, they're from they're, the UK. They're just, they're just badass guys. One is from the UK. One is from Boston. Uh, and listen. They, they they don't have to speak. Go and kick ass. That's all that's necessary. I think that maybe sometimes you could almost see them and they almost look like they're too similar. Right. And that's what kind of throws people off a little bit. Right. Agreed. I think I think um Danny Birch needs like another I don't know, it's weird. You're you're right. It's a little weird. Hey, so, someone gotta grow a big ass beard or some shit. Like somebody, yeah. gotta someone get like, so they, they need a Braun Strowman kind of guy. Yeah, somebody gotta get a fucking ZZ top look or some shit like that. Cause it's it, 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 they gotta oh, separate brothers. man. Yeah, they got, um <laughs> other great guitarists as well. The very yes. underrated those both both the brothers, they're very uh, underrated as guitarists. Um by the way, fun fact on the ZZ top, both the brothers have long beards, right? But actually, yep. the guy I think is the drummer. He his his name is Beard. His name his name is Beard. His last name is Beard. And does he have one? No, <laughs> no. Oh fucking course! Oh fucking course! The world, ladies and gentlemen, in 2020 and ever. That that, that is that is useless knowledge from Jada Rat Santi. Bing beating, bing bing bing. Okay. Thank you. Bye PBS. <laughs> um. So. That was the opening there for NXT there. A few side um, situations we'll talk about right now. Let's talk about it. Tony Storm picked up her first win back against Aaliyah. That was obvious. It was great to have the rock star back on Wednesday nights. Tony Storm, I'm a big fan of her. Happy to see where she goes from here. Rhea Ripley and Raquel Gonzalez had words when the nightmare overheard Raquel take, talking some trash in an interview. Uh, of course, Rhea Ripley and, Rhea and Raquel Gonzalez get split up, and they did a good job building this match, this big match. Um, especially how uh, Raquel Gonzalez has not been featured in a lot of singles match prior to this. So Rhea Ripley and Raquel Gonzalez is going to happen, and um, I'm hoping it's a Halloween happen. Uh, Jake Atlas defeated Ashante the Adonis. Took advantage when Rail that Raul motherfucker Mendoza... needs a new name. I'm sorry. That... You don't like Ashante? The Adon- no, that, that motherfucker needs a new name. We got to do something <laughs> different about that. They pressed random on 2K. Anyway, um... <laughs> Um, Jake Atlas took advantage when Raul Mendoza and Joaquin Wilde walked out looking for some revenge on Adonis. But um, uh, I wonder if Jake Atlas is going to get in that cruiserweight title picture because Scott lost the last two. So I can only I can only imagine what Jake Atlas will do in the cruiserweight division. We got Johnny, Johnny Gargano versus Austin Theory. What do you thought about this one, Red? I, uh, this pairing was – I'm happy to see this. Um, I don't know. I don't. It, it's. I like both of them, but it was just. Uh, I was okay with it. Yeah, I'm still. I don't. That's once again. It's it, it's one of those things that once again you get a pairing of of these guys and you're not sure whether it's sh- it's too soon or it should it should happen. You know, I, I don't. I don't know. I I, I was kind of. You know, that's kind of one of those matches I got to watch again. Right, and I probably will because it was. It, I love both of them. Austin Theory loses, of course. Um, he's right now he's in a position that. 
he's he's a great charisma, but he's just putting guys over at this point. It sucks. Uh, Wade Barrett pointed out his losing streak um, and qualified that it was because he was against a list of really good talent. Good job there saving that, Wade Barrett. I appreciate that. Uh, but we'll see where Austin Theory goes in the future, but Gargano picks up the win there. Drake Maverick and Killian Dane fought Imperium this week. Red, what do you think about this tag team battle? What do you think about Drake Maverick and Killian Dane? Oh, my God. The only one who can punch you is me. <laughs> <laughs> That's his... Oh, Jesus. They're... they're, they're, they're Listen, they're, they're, they're the goofy tag team. They're the goofy fucking um, wrestlers and shit. It sucks because I believe Killian Dane deserves more than that. But, yeah, sometimes you got sometimes you got to play the role for for now. Uh, Yeah, you're right. You're right. Also on NXT, uh, we had Shotzi Blackheart versus Shotzi! Panther Ray. Which I got to give love to my, my boo, Shotzi Blackheart, my favorite woman in the women's division at NXT right now. In Oogie Boogie-like form. She brings out the the wheel of chaos um, right. for Hall- for Halloween Havoc, which was co- the wheel was actually called. Um, I just had the name. Hold on. Um, oh, it was called spin a spin the wheel, make a deal. Right. Uh, and, That's an uh, old school WCW um, gimmick, I believe. Uh, it, it added it added a. Um, Fun stipulation to Gargano you know, and um, Damian Priest, which will happen to Halloween Havoc. Um, I think it was a uh, – I don't know what it – but it, it adds it adds a fun retro um, vibe to NXT, which I think they are known for doing in your house, Halloween Havoc. It'll only get more from here, ladies and gentlemen, which you can't be mad at. It's an homage to the past. Well, but Shotzi Blackheart is truly a talent. I, well, I love her. Hopefully I not, a, not all the matches are booked that way, so – yeah, it's only a few, which I'm happy. I think all matches should, but I mean, make it make it, make it all night. Fuck it. Um, but it was cool to see. And uh, and finally, the main event NXT this week we had Damian Priest versus Dexter Loomis. What do you thought? I thought it was too soon to have this match. He yeah. just returned. Come on. Yeah, exactly. But um, he just returned. Yeah. But once again, you know, we we spoke about it earlier. It, 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 basically, fucking um. NXT is they're a mash unit, man. You got everybody's fucking hurt and everybody's everyone's out. hurt, yeah. yeah. So you got to start but, putting these matches together. But why? But why have the title on the line? This is what I don't it's, understand. It's, it's it's rushed booking because it's them having to compete with the shit that was going on in the other fucking uh, show. So I don't even think they have to compete to get better. Than they this really shit. don't. <laughs> they really don't. But this is just um, their, their 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 way of counter programming. It was way too soon. Um, the match was okay. Um, Cameron Grimes, of course, um, cost Dexter Loomis the match, but nothing much to say about that besides it's too fucking soon. Cameron Grimes, to- baby! To the moon! On to eight. <laughs> On to... <laughs> On... What the fuck are we Jesus doing? Jesus Christ. What are you doing here? On to... <laughs> On to a jeez, I can't, I can't even talk now. <laughs> Jesus, um, on to AEW Dynamite, where oh my God, was this a shit show? Um, <laughs> this was the most embarrassing episode of AEW. You sure? Because the one last week was pretty bad. <laughs> yeah, but I think this one was worse because it was a, sh- it was every segment was bad. Like it was every fucking segment. It was fucking terrible. Cameron Grant. I'm sorry, I just had to do it again. Right. To the moon! <laughs> um, so we started off with FTR facing best friends. Red, what do you thought about this terrible tag team match, which uh, makes no sense? Let me tell you, the first five minutes of this match, I said, okay, this might have potential. They, they might have something going on here. Then it went to shit. The, the blind tags, the, the fucking that referee must be related to Ray Charles or Stevie Wonder because wow, Tully Blanchard fucking interfered openly in front of the ref and he did nothing. Yeah, well, this has been the thing since the beginning of AEW. Damn it, referees don't do shit. And I hate when they do that. They throw their hands up in the air like, oh, I don't, I don't know what's that. What happened there? I don't know. <laughs> like, you know, like a nineteen thirties. Silent film actor just like, oh, uh, like you don't know what the fuck just happened. Do DQ them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it makes no sense. It Ugh. makes no sense. Um, I like best friends, but this match just it didn't it didn't it hit different for me. Of course, FTR and best friends collide into the game the, the, the arcade cabinet, <laughs> which caught which co- <laughs> and they had which... to make it, they had to make it known when the show started that Kip Sabian was playing a fucking game. In in the middle of nothing, like it, it, it's how do you 
listen, I love gamer gimmicks, but how are you going to make a badass like Miro and Kip Sabian's gimmick arcade mooks from Barcade? Like, what? <laughs> this is what I, this is this would have been the easiest thing to do. Any, I'm sorry, Leroy Green, but they would have had to fucking steal your gimmick for this one. Yep. You could have had them both sitting. You could have had them both sitting in the crowd scouting because you know they're 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 scouting for a tag team you know, competition or whatever, or scouting for the titles. And Miro could have been playing the switch. A right. spot happened, and you broke his switch while he's playing. Right. Or right. not even exactly. playing. He just had it in his hand because. Him out there watch scouting a match and playing Switch would make no sense. But at least having it in his hand would right. have shown... Because now he's getting, he's a gamer, a Twitch streamer. Right. So um, now what you just did is you brought out this big obnoxious arcade, which, by the way, who the fuck plays that anymore? Who does it's not, that? It's not, I don't even think it's that red. I, don't, I might even mad at that. Listen, the, the 8-bit one-up arcades are pretty popular now. Yeah, and, and that, you know what? That clearly wasn't. But you know what? You're right, and that's what should have been fucking out there because you would have you <laughs> actually been smart because you would have actually got a promotion with them to do that. That yep. would have been the, smart. Because those are didn't. the most popular items in the holidays, the one-up arcade machines, because they're, 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 they're sizable you can put in your crib, and they're actually right. pretty cool. But no, you like, actually got a fucking... Old school '90s arcade with the dust cabinet, and the dust and all. Yeah, with arcade cabinet, and I think I think that was the Neo Geo one that they were playing too, if I'm not mistaken. It was, it was, oh God! I, so you got that one in the middle of fucking nowhere, which you already had said. Okay, that's about to break. Somebody's gonna go through that shit. Of course, because it's magically there, um, which is terrible booking. Uh, FTR wins, of course, by cheating again, and. Um, as you as you could see, Kip Sabian and Penelope Ford ran to retrieve Miro. Miro and Kip attacked best friends after the match. Uh, Miro now instead of saying Rusev Crush, he goes Game Over. I think this. If you're, if, if, uh, I, and you know what this shows me, Red? Honestly, this shows me that they don't take their championship matches seriously. They don't take anything because, seriously. They don't because, take anything. Because no, because if this match was a serious tag team title match, there would be no side storylines. There would be no gaming bullshit. It would be uh, focused on the prize at hand. Right. And it wasn't. It wasn't. The tag titles were an afterthought, and it's fucking stupid. It makes no fucking sense. And, and let's just jam through the rest of this fucking terrible show. All right. Um, <laughs> after that, let's we have Miro and Kip Sabian. <laughs> yeah, seriously, I want to go to SmackDown. SmackDown was fucking awesome. Uh, Miro and Miro and Kip Sabian squash Lee Johnson and Sean Maluda again. By the way, that's the um, that's the Usos when you order them on Wish. Yeah, that's <laughs> <laughs> the Usos on um the Usos on Etsy. What? Um, <laughs> Oh, um, was that was that other Miro, shit? The deal dash? Miro, <laughs> is that deal dash Usos? Yeah, for real. Miro did all the work, tagging in Sabian for a quick splash, and of course the camel clutch. After the match, Kip Sabian and Miro yell at the broken video game and threaten best friends. You broke my shit. My like, God, right, bro. Whatever. Um, I told you this. I told you. Yeah, I listen. Told I, I wanted you. to give it a little more time, and now I can confirm it's a waste. It's hey, terrible. It's told you. Um, it's horrible. Also on AEW this week, we had the oh jeez, I, I hate to be sound negative, but once again, a terrible segment. We get we get um, the the tag team uh, um, um, bingo night where they pick four random balls out of the bingo to decide who faces each other. How do you how do you how do you make a number one contender match based off bingo balls? I th- th- this is what I'm telling. I- there's nothing wrong with going into the well and just using old shit, either the way that it was done, it. repurposing it, or just revamping it. One of the two. There's nothing wrong with doing that. But now we have to be creative and do tag team bingo. <laughs> I know. Why don't we just throw darts up against a fucking wall and see who it lands on? I don't know. <laughs> Let's spin a wheel and throw knives at the fucking pictures on the wheel of tag teams and see which one it lands on. I don't know. <laughs> let's let's play tag team twister. Whoever falls is eliminated. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was terrible. Let's... Random draw determined participants for a four way tag team number one contender bout next week, and the people who are included are Private Party, 
Reynolds and Silver from Dark Order, Butcher and Blade, and of course the winners, the clear winners, the Young Bucks. Young Bucks then super kick two random members of this in the ring, and um, the Bucks and Private Party clear the ring. They um, the Bucks initiated a handshake, but then super kick Private Party anyway. I think they're trying to go back to that heel thing where they super kicked everyone. You think? <laughs> you think? <laughs> <laughs> like I told you, I don't get it. You're naturally assholes. Like you don't have to try this hard to be assholes. You're naturally yep. assholes. Yeah. It's a reach. Yeah, you don't really need to do all this extra shit. It's too much. Yeah, it's it's way too much. It's but then way now too much. You have two fucking heel teams going at it with each other. Oh, here we go once again. AEW not believing in faces and heels. Man, that whole segment was stupid. Yeah, because, Once again, yeah, we because, go, we, yeah, because I yo, was... Red, 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 we're talking about a wrestling show. This we're talking about a wrestling show right now, and it goes from arcade cabinets to bingo. If I explain this to someone, they would think this is not wrestling. This is the fun. <laughs> t- this is the fun, this, is Nick, this is Nickelodeon. They, they would think that you were that you were literally making it up in your bedroom while you're playing with your fucking GI Joes and shit. Zooted, <laughs> zooted, like <laughs> like what the fuck, bro? Uh, and believe me, it gets worse. It gets worse. Yeah, because you uh, know gets... you know what I've always looked forward to. I wanted to see Thanos and fucking Dark Side from fucking DC and and fucking Marvel <laughs> go head to head with each other because I wanted to see both heels go at it. I don't want them. I don't want them both taking over the galaxy. Oh hell no! I want Apocalypse and fucking and, and Thanos to fight each other, rather than fight the superheroes that they that are trying to defend the world and the universe. Yeah, that's what I want. Fucking assholes. absolutely, absolutely fucking terrible. Idiots. It's just terrible. Up next, we get the number one contender tournament bracket revealed for a future AEW World Championship opportunity, and we get the first. Which I'm actually not mad at this. We had Phoenix versus Pentagon. We're gonna have that's actually sounds like a pretty good uh a ma- a match there. We have Kenny Omega versus Joey Janela. I wonder who's gonna win that one. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, Colt Cabana versus Hangman Page. I wonder who's gonna win that one. And then we got Wardlow versus Jungle Boy, which I'm actually pretty excited about. Those are pretty interesting matchups besides the ones with Hangman and fucking and and, and, and fucking Kenny Omega. Um, um, MJF had an idea to combine forces. Um, we get um, MJF coming out to the ring, um, asking Jericho if he could join the inner circle. Ortiz stepped in to decline that idea, but Jericho slowed it down. And um, they announced that they will be having a steak dinner next week on live television. This is not a wrestling show anymore. This is the <laughs> arcade, arcade cabinet, arcade cabinet, bingo, and now steak dinner. This sounds like you... the worst. F- this sounds like the worst porno on XNXX I've ever watched in my life. <laughs> You wasted 10 minutes of fucking programming in which you could have had wrestling going on on this fucking stupid ass fucking promo where once again you have two of probably the best talkers in the business and you look it. like fucking idiots going and back also and I did not fu- um, by the way I want to put a quick side note I found fa- I didn't find the Sammy Guevara jacket being too big funny at all it actually was corny the whole thing is bullshit it's just Wasted nonsense. Yeah, yeah, they're and not I'll tell good. You, they're they're not. They're, you're not. La- they're not laughing with you. They're laughing at the fans because it's like I'm. We, we think that we're hilarious, and you're gonna laugh. You're gonna laugh, and I'm telling you, you're gonna laugh. And it's like, no, <laughs> we're not. I'm not going to laugh. No. And, and, and honestly, and and not for nothing, you had a conversation with somebody earlier today about wrestling, right? And it's and I go look, and and you were right when you spoke to him. If you don't mind me saying so. The, the, the person thought that this week's episode was great And you go, really? And you have a conversation with them You have a dialogue with them And you, you, you said it poignantly where you told them I'm glad that you like it Because that keeps them on TV And you want wrestling to be good You want yep. people to like it But honestly To me, it's shit it's so And, that's shit. Okay. <laughs> and that's okay And that's okay And that's okay I told them, I was like, listen man I'm happy you're giving them the views because I do not want them to go away, but I do want them to step the fucking game up and do some things to do some better. Um, supposedly, um, uh, which by the way, he mentioned it as well. Shout out to Tommy. Um, he said that Britt Baker on that interview, I told you about how she said, don't turn the channel. Don't change the channel on the women. His, her excuse was, well, most of our women are international talent. So they couldn't fly over. Bullshit. That has nothing Who? to do with it. That has nothing to do with it. Who? Freddie Mercury. <laughs> <laughs> that bitch I mean, that, that shit Like Who else Who else 
Uh, Riho? 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 Who else? Riho? She, don't, she don't save me shit. But what? Uh, they, they don't have a lot of British talent, female talent out there. You no, got rid they of, don't. You got rid of um, the other girl. Be a uh, priestly. Be a priestly. You got rid of her. Yeah. Everybody else is there. You so have excuses, the excuses, excuses, excuses. No. Oh, jeez. If okay, it so looks like so... shit, smells like shit, and even fucking eh, kind of you know, gets hard like shit, it's shit. Oh, oh, and Red, I, I just want to point out that we I forgot to mention this. This was the one year celebration anniversary of AEW. This was supposed to be a star studded night. Yeah, I was about to say, did you see anything that was star studded? Did you? If it wasn't that they kept reminding me that yeah. it was the one year anniversary, I would have not known. And then exactly. they did. Check this shit out. Then they did a a, a year montage of this uh, of what went on, right? And you know when they did it. During a fucking commercial break, and it was on a fucking side by side screen. So while you're watching a commercial for fucking um, Geico or Liberty Mutual, the side of the fucking uh, <laughs> the other side was the year review of fucking wrestling. Are you kidding me? Red, you gotta say it right. You gotta say it like JR. It's picture, picture. <laughs> Fuck out of here, bro. Picture. It's, we're back from picture, picture. It's like, what are you talking? What are you, Mister Rogers? Um, and what are you fucking Mr. Rogers? Um, anyway, the share it's screen. Terrible. It's the fucking share screen. It's like it's a share fuck? screen. Like what the fuck? Picture, picture. I'm like, okay, I don't care about picture. picture. Stop hyping that up. Angst does it as well. It's not we're, we're live, buddy. <laughs> we're not unique, motherfucker. Okay. Um, we're live, buddy. Also on AEW this week. Um, uh, <laughs> supposedly <laughs> we're having a few between Sean Spears and um Sean Spears and Scorpio Sky with a quick video there. Which I'm is, actually, which, which I'm excited for that. But I'm actually intrigued about that. I gotta tell you one thing though. Sean the Spears, story was a reach though. Sean Spears without a beard. Ugh. No, no, Dude. no, no. He needs that beard, son. Yeah, he looks weird. He looks like he um he looks like he smokes cigarettes outside of schools, elementary <laughs> schools, for no reason. He sells uh, he sells loose cigarettes outside of outside of high schools. <laughs> out of St. Pancras. Um, um, okay. Um, if this night couldn't get any worse, we see Matt Hardy in the audience with his family, um, saying that he's a hundred percent clear to compete, and we get the most awkward. We get the most awkward and cringiest hold reveal on, wait, hold on, wait, wait. <laughs> I've yeah, ever seen in my up, life. Talking about while I go get a beer, because yo, I yo, I swear to you, I said the same. Sh- I actually had to rewind it because I said, "Wait a minute, what the fuck just happened here?" Hold on, get talking up. Yo, it was the cringiest moment in AEW history. Um, and Matt Hardy's talking about how he's hyped to come back, and all of a sudden we get a random person in a hoodie burning four tapestries of Matt Hardy in a random parking lot. Um, Sammy Guevara, it turns out to be Sammy Guevara. He turns around from the hoodie and he literally says in the most anticlimactic way, it was me. It was me, Matt Hardy. It was me all along. And he said it in that exact tone. He didn't say it like, it was me, you motherfucker. He said, it was me, Matt. It was me all along. I think he was and, trying to go with the whole uh, Vince McMahon fucking Ministry of Darkness nonsense. Yes, yes, and but it was it's, terrible. <laughs> it's almost like if you had a little brother and he's trying to show you that he's tough after exactly after you slap exactly. the shit out of him because he touched your fucking uh your your, your record fucking collection and you slap him what the fuck you doing he turns around and he gives you that face like I swear I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna beat you up I'm gonna fight you and tell mom it, it was just it was by far the cringiest reveal I've ever seen in my life. In all honesty, when it was revealed it to be Sammy, I did not give a fuck. I didn't care. Um, I know Matt Hardy said, I'm not giving up on this feud. Let's keep no, fighting the best Sammy. part is that he turns to Tony Schiavone. He goes, did you know about this? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Did you know about this? Uh, it's a, it's a, how the fuck would Tony know about this, bro? Matt, Matt, Matt. You've been in wrestling for how long? You're, come on, come on, man. It, 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 is, it, is, it is embarrassing. It is embarrassing. I can't it, this, with this, this show. This whole show was I fucking can't. embarrassing. I can't with this show. I really can't. It, it, it's fucking terrible. Oh, God, um, so it's... the mystery attacker, like fucking... I said, Sandy Guevara turns around in the most anticlimactic way goes, it was me. It was me burning tapestries of Matt Hardy with a fucking loose lighter. Like, fuck you, bro. Honestly, it's so stupid. <sighs> um, so let's continue for this shit show. Have you noticed <laughs> I haven't said one positive thing all, all, all show? Oh, um, 
and it's not me being a hater, guys. It's me being honest. This and, is how and, I feel. And so. honest, and you know what's funny too is that we've had these conversations, and where you always are the one telling me, "Dude, give it a give it a chance." I, yo, you just a negative. Nelly, I try, you know? and I go, "Bro, I'm telling you, I, I I don't think I know more than anybody. It's just what I'm seeing is garbage. It doesn't make sense, and this has been happening for fucking weeks." Months for, um, exactly for months, and, and, and it's not I just like, want I just wanted to like give me, Nero and the new situations a new chance. Yeah, but, but it's not I, like me trying failed. to like conform you to the dark side or, or anything or like. No, said, no, 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 not I, at all. And, no. And people always sit there and go, "Oh, you just listen to Cornet too much." And they're like, "No, it's not that." It's like I had a conversation with um uh uh, uh during the, in one of the chat rooms where I go, "Guys, listen, I don't mind." New wrestling. I like guys that are okay. coming up, like Daniel Garcia, the Calvin Tankmans. Uh, yep. uh, I like uh, the. Uh, I like those guys. I do because at least they're 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 athletic, but they also appreciate and understand wrestling. You know, if they right. tweak them, get them in a get them in a in a in a in a in a setting to where you get them professionals who are actually going to train them the right way. They're going to be superstars. But when you get this shit. Where it's basically the blind leading the blind, and it's it's like I said, like I said before, it's like when you watch the Bad News Bears, where the fucking coach ain't there, and the fucking players are teaching each other how to hit the ball. You, right. You don't have <laughs> right. Any, you don't have any leadership. There's no leadership, and I'm actually ashamed of Dean Malenko and all these fucking vets in exactly. the back. Exactly. That's the other shit too. It's like, what the fuck are they getting paid for? Yeah. What are you? Especially Dean Malenko. Dean Malenko came from a fucking prestigious. Family of wrestlers. He's like second or third generation wrestler. I mean, what is he doing? What are you doing there? What's your purpose? <laughs> nothing. I nothing. Know. I don't know. Um, oh, Jesus Christ. Um, up next we had Hikaru Shida putting up her championship against Big Swole. Up next we had Orange Cassidy versus. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, like uh, that. Like she gets worse every fucking week. Big Swole gets worse everywhere. Um, Red, Red, I, Red, you said last week that she's the worst <laughs> women's wrestler on TV in any brand. What any brand. Across, up and down the board. And it just... Wow. It, and it goes it goes down and down and down for her every fucking week. It's funny because um, Little Bit had even mentioned she says that she likes a Karo Shida, but she says she just feels like they don't put her in the right matches with people. And it's they true. don't. Unless it's Britt And there's Baker, no build-up. There's no build-up. You got to put her in the matches solidly where, like, uh, uh, like she she had uh, solid matches with Britt Baker. You got to put her in matches with fucking, um, with, like, uh, Eva Lise or, or Thunder Rosa or, uh, you know, d- these women that you're signing, not, you got, so you got, yo, you got Serena Deeb in there. Like, listen. Yeah, she's great. Fine. You're going to use her for advancement, uh, an advancement of talent, which by the way, she should be there fucking teaching classes. That's what yeah, she needs she really to do. should. She's that good. But then you, she, Serena Deeb has been great for years, far yep. beyond. And she's still great young. Pickup. Yeah. She could, she's still young. She should be booking the fucking AEW women's division at this point. Hell yeah. But then now you got the fact that, you put her in these situations, and now, rather than elevate them, she lost to a fucking big swole last week, and then now you got her in a match with a Karushita, and <laughs> a Karushita couldn't make her look good. Nope, and I think I I think we could all agree on this. The women's division needs Britt Baker as champion more than ever because if she, if Britt Baker does not become the champion, if we do not get Britt Baker as a champion. It's gonna crumble. What do you think? Uh, you know she has a lot to work with too. And, and, and another little bit reference. She goes. She needs. She needs to get better. She's fucking uh, Mrs. Adam Cole already. Like what the fuck? Yes. So uh, she's oh. too. But here's the other. But they're thing. desperate. Oh, no, they're, 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 it needs a shift. And to have her as a champ, yeah, it, it needs to happen. You don't have to be a good wrestler to be a great heel champion. You don't nope. have to. It's called the mic, and it's called your mouth. Right. So that. Mm, that kind of sounded sexual a little bit, but <laughs> of course I made it on purpose. <laughs> um, but in all reality, it's 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 probably needed right now, especially for that division. Which, by the way, what the f- where the fuck are all the other women at? Where's Nyla Rose? In Disney World. I can ima- I can only imagine. Yeah, I, they're they're in Star Wars Land. Uh, <laughs> they're they're looking at Harry Potter World and shit. Well, supposedly Vicky Guerrero and Nyla Rose have made a swimsuit calendar for 2021. Oh my God! I please let me know where I could get that so I could give it to a fucking blind kid. 
No, we need we, we need that <laughs> we, for the we need that we need that for the studio. I ain't first, gonna yo. lie though, yo, I ain't gonna front, yo, yo, we should get that shit and hang it right. For... <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, right next to me. Fuck you. Bro. Exactly. I gotta fucking stare at that hang shit it right thing. next to you. Everything I, I everything that comes in the studio that I want to fucking I, you know get your attention and, and probably irate you. Shoves it in front you. of me. I put it right in front of you. <laughs> yo, the amount of props I've come like I'm surprised I haven't seen rubber chicken and fucking the swordfish <laughs> and the Muppets yet. <laughs> Like uh, like the fucking uh, the, the, the boomerang the boomerang fish the boomerang fish uh, from fucking the Muppets. Um, you talk about it, it might happen too. Oh God! Huh? <laughs> By the way, trash, horrible, horrible match. Horrible match. Up next we had. Cody Rhodes back is back in blonde. Oh, by the way, let me versus... just go. Let me just go back quick. I I mentioned before. I said, why is it that Japanese wrestlers have to be Japanese? They they make them so fucking stereotypical. It's... The same reason why they make black people dance and jig. Exactly. And jig. Like, why do you have to make them so? Can't I get a Japanese wrestler that's just like? Badass American. I look at Kushida. Kushida is Japanese, but he comes out with he's a big fucking Back to the Future fan and all that shit. So, and he, he he's he's cool with it. Yes, I like it. I'm afraid if he goes to the main roster and say, like, no, 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 pal, we gotta put you in a gi or a ninja no, outfit. No, you're gonna be Akira Tozawa's ninja. <laughs> My ninja. It's gonna be My one ninja. of that, It's gonna be that shit. Which, by the way, I want to point out the fact that wrestling is based on stereotypes, and it's always has been. So that, that's the main reason why. Yeah, exactly. They make fucking people Indians and fucking Native Americans that aren't even Native American. I think it was like um, Chief J. Strongbow. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he, he he was fucking Italian. Like. <laughs> yep, and he and, and Vince used to give all the black guys headbutts. I wonder why. You know, <laughs> very racist. Very racist and stereotypical, man. And Will and, made a good point last fuck, night. And, it's racist. And fucking Samoans and Hawaiians, they bite the heads of chickens and shit like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I, I wonder why Umaga had the, the thumb, the fucking spike, the right, thumb the spike. spike thumb. I, your... I wonder why. Um, did they crack coconuts, I guess? I don't know exactly. what the fuck that's about. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck that was about. I, lo- I love Umaga, but Jesus Christ, that's exactly. being stereotypical. Um, we have Cody versus Orange Cassidy for the TNT Championship, and I really like. I really. I, I, I wish I could skip this, but I can't. They went the time limit red. They fucking broke the time limit. It was a draw. Um, Orange Cassidy, the fucking same dude we saw at Outlaw Wrestling last year at a fucking little fucking brewery. Uh, went the limit with Cody Rhodes. What do you thought about this segment, man? Because I am not only disappointed with Cody here, I'm actually disappointed in the entire back of AEW. This that it's a metal thinking that it's okay to give me the metaphorical middle finger to prove a point. We get it. You love him. I don't care anymore. And get old. So get him. Get him. Right. And that's the best way to say it. You said it perfectly. The metaphorical middle finger, because that's exactly what it is. They giving you the fuck you because they're saying, you know what? You you don't think that he's good? Well, we're gonna put him to the fucking moon just because you you guys are acting like shitheads to him. Just because just because you hate him, I'm putting him over. And look, you 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 know say what you said before when we spoke um off the mic where you talked about how how you really you do like Cassidy. I like Cass. I'm a fan of Cassidy for what he is. You know, uh, not taken too seriously. He's he's he does his job. But when you throw a guy like this. In Chris Jericho and Cody like feuds, it kind of forces me to not like him because now he's in the. I'll be honest with you, Red, and this is—I don't know if this is a good comparison or not. I have heat with him, like I had heat with Roman when he was a face. Right. You're shoving me. You're right. shoving him down my throat. Exactly, you're shoving yeah. him down my yeah. throat for, for just out of spite. Yeah, and you're pissing me off and, now because now that's, Orange that's Cassidy. Exactly no, if Orange Cassidy was in some feuds. If Orange Cassidy wasn't like a feud with maybe like Sean Spears or maybe Peter Avalon, I'd be like, you know what? That's his place. I'm sorry. But Orange Cassidy, listen, man, you're probably a great dude. And if you ever hear this, you probably won't. I'll tell you the straight facts of life. You have no place to be in back to back feuds with Cody and fucking Chris Jericho. <laughs> and do I'm a 20 sorry. minute fucking match. And they have a rematch in two weeks. Yo, by the way, the, here's a funny shit, right? Because you have the order of the uh, the, the matches uh, thrown off, but the match yeah. <laughs> the match was a twenty okay. minute it was a twenty minute draw, right? 
<laughs> the match yep. between uh, uh Cody and fucking Orange Cassidy was a twenty minute draw, right? <laughs> Yep. But if you'd announced the match afterwards, which was Big Swole versus Kushida, it was at a 60 minute time limit. It's like, what? What? <laughs> How does one belt have 20 minutes and you have 60? Which, by the way, if that match went 60, I would have jumped off of the fucking bridge. Okay? It's like, what? If that was to reach 60, I would have died. Okay? But, jeez. Uh, it should have been a six-minute time. I mean, that's what it should yeah, have been. Yeah, no, it really, it really fucking should have been. A, a fucking four-minute um, disaster. But what do you thought about Cody and fucking Orange Cassidy wrestling-wise? This is probably the worst open challenge that he's ever done. And not be, and it's not to shit on <laughs> Cassidy as as what the gimmick is or him as a, whatever or the, the person or whatever. Is the fact that there was no synchronicity between those two. I know that's a big word. Somebody got to pick that up. It's heavy. Um, there wow. was no synchronicity between the two. None. It didn't. No, it, uh, it was so unfortunate that there could have been a possibility here. He just got off a fucking near squash with... Not even a near squash. I don't even know why he, he still had time, but he had a, a, a match with with um, Brody Lee not too long ago, and then you go into a match which Brody Lee won clean, but then you can't yep. fucking win and pull a draw against fucking against fucking Orange. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah, no, it, it doesn't, doesn't make any sense. I, I'm I'm still trying to put together the 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 premise of is the is is Orange Cassidy the gimmick. Bigger than the wrestler or his or his move set is it is it bigger? Um, the the the, the gimmick itself is it bigger than him, or or, or him as a wrestler? Be because I think people just love the gimmick. They don't really know him as a fucking wrestler because they, they, you can't. You the gimmick the gimmick is indeed genius. I mean, listen, I, I it's genius because he knows exactly what he was getting himself into. He know he knows what it was. It's a smart gimmick um, because, listen, not everyone, not everyone needs to be a badass MMA former MMA fighter. You right. know what I'm saying? Like, right. like I, I, I get, I, I'm not mad at the gimmick. I'm mad at the fact that we know the gimmick's limitations, right? Exactly. And expectations, and that's and that's a good point as well. Yeah, we we know the gimmick's limits and expectations, and Tony Khan on purpose, not out of luck, not because the fans are reacting to him positively, because there's no fans. It's because Tony Khan, out of spite and out of friendship, is putting him over for his own personal, his own personal pleasure. No, 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 and I'm and it's and pissing no, me off. And remember, and remember the first time we saw him when I when I saw him for the first time, I said, "What the fuck is this?" I said, "What right. is this?" But then when you were you, over it, right? I was like, "Oh, get the fuck out of here!" But then when he started wrestling, I was like, "Okay, the kid, the kid, the kid got you know he got some shit." Yes, he can work. Yeah, surprisingly so, he can work. And it's one of those things to where it's unfortunate, and I don't, and it kind of sucks for me to say this, and I don't, you know, I don't give a fuck, but oh, fuck, at, it. Well, fuck it. But at the end of the day, certain things need to be left in an indie in in that indie setting. Yeah. And I think that maybe that gimmick should, should be, stay there. Should stay there. I and you wonder should... why WWE repackages people, right? And I think because some some gimmicks are meant for TV. Yo, the opening five minutes of that match, right? They were going through, you know, chain wrestling and blah, 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 whatever, right? And the, the one thing that I that I that I, I took in consideration with Cody was he wasn't gonna tolerate that fucking um that gimmick bullshit. I'm gonna put, put fucking hands in his pocket nonsense. Like like he was like fuck you. He pushed him and all this shit, trying to fire them up and all that bull. Right. That I like. But then he started getting into like chain wrestling moves and and counteracting counter, and it wasn't clicking. It wasn't there. It just nope. I don't know. I don't know. It was it was nervousness out of Cassidy. I don't know if it was just Cody not really giving in to it or uh, to per se, but it just wasn't happening. Then the Dark Order fucking intervenes. Why? I, they, they, come on, really? Why? <laughs> Why? Why? Then finally, you get to the you get to the point of the match where okay, now Orange Cassidy has to uh, work work the injury. He has to work the leg, right? Yeah. And once again, this is this is this is a situation to where you don't have the proper individuals in place to teach you how to do this. 
him trying to sell the leg injury was almost as though like I just took my daughter's nose when she was a baby and said, I'm not going to give it back to you until she realizes she goes, you don't have my nose. I can breathe. <laughs> wow, that's a good one. Can't fucking t- you, you couldn't sell it. You couldn't sell it at all. Nope. And um, even the finish, the finish was shit. It, 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 it almost <laughs> once the time limit started coming up, and he started hot shying and fucking working. When you're a face trying to win a title off of 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 someone. Everything should be pinfall, 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 pinfall. You're fucking hitting the, the taunt button on fucking 2K? This is what we're doing now? <laughs> the fuck is going on with it? What's going on with this company, bro? Like, this honestly, company is bad, son. <laughs> what the fuck? And, and honestly, it's not the company's bad. It's just the fucking uh, booking and the storytelling is bad. It's horrible. The booking is atrocious. And I felt, and I, and I felt, it's like Cody. You should know better. You should have called. This is one of those matches that honestly you should go. You should say, um, it's one of two things. And in Cornette and a lot of uh, Cornette, uh, Arn Anderson, a lot of guys who are in the business and who have podcasts and such, and they said the the days of calling matches in the ring are done. It's over. They're done, though. It's They're over. Done-zo. And this was a match that needed to be called in the ring. But the problem is that Cody can do that, but Cassidy can't. Nope, he cannot. He won't be able. He, he has to. He has to get it beforehand. He has to get everything beforehand. And, yes. and it's unfortunate. And what? Now the buildup is for Cody versus Darby. That's about to happen next, right? Oh God. Yeah, I guess so. Oh, okay. Right. Uh, oh, another another man. another one who doesn't. Who I love it? Darby. I I like Darby. But and that that match is gonna fall to shit because his 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 storyline with fucking um with 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 um Taz's team is not over yet. So no, it's not. So. It's not. And um, like I said, I love Darby Allen, but a little little change up maybe. Right. Um, and to finish off AEW, this was the longest sh- uh fucking show because because we had a, this this whole show sucked. Uh, we got John Moxley versus Lance Archer. In, I think it was the, the the best part of the night. What do you thought? Uh, <laughs> wait, before they do that, <laughs> they attack Moxley right <laughs> before the night, right? <laughs> they yep. attack it, right? So then, <laughs> afterwards, they do an interview segment in the back to where fucking uh, uh, Archer and, and and Jake the Snake are are, are talking. <laughs> they ask they ask um Jake about. Why did you attack John Moxley? He goes, Why did you attack him? Why did we attack Moxley? <laughs> so why do you climb a big mountain? Because it's there, right? <laughs> oh <laughs> my god. And all of a sudden Moxley comes out of nowhere. <laughs> supposedly, because Jake is already in the in the peripheral and he can see Moxley get, could come, but didn't warn Archer that he was gonna he get said. hit, right? Right? Yeah, yeah. And what did what did Fucking Jake, do he just casually walked away? Of course he did. <laughs> of course he did. He, uh, we we might not see Jake for a little while. He might go take care of Scott Hall. Yeah, yeah, it sounds pretty bad. But also, did I did I mention about the Lex Luger thing on uh wrestling? Yes, you did. Yeah, yes, you did. so maybe you know all three of them could fucking um work their shit out. But um, I hope so. Honestly, I think that uh, I think <laughs> this was probably the better of the the better match of the night. Yeah, but, but what but, are we comparing? But apples not, and oranges? Yeah, exactly, but not by much. Um, you weren't going to get their New Japan fucking match. You weren't going to get that. I think a better match is coming for them, though. Uh, you can only hope. You can only hope. But, you know. I, I, like, I, like, I like both of them. I just think, uh, you know, it's just a really bad night. Listen, when you've been when you've been fed shit the whole night, and all of a sudden somebody brings you ice cream, you go, okay. You don't, you don't want to eat it. You go, you go, all right, thank God. All right, somebody. <laughs> so, uh, still tastes like shit, but at least it's not shit. <laughs> exactly. Um, Moxley wins. Oh, by the um, way, did you see the other promo with the Britt Baker and Tony Schiavone and the fucking... Yeah. Masa- oh, sorry about that. Yeah, the spa day. <laughs> yeah, uh, suppose, yeah, that shit was Yo, terrible. I laugh not because it's funny. I laugh because it's fucking dumb. It's dumb. I'm sorry. They look like they filmed that I'm shit sorry, in a they're, closet. They're, they're doing Tony Schiavone so wrong. And he likes it. I'm yeah, telling you, the I money know. must be fantastic. 
It must yep. be great money to be a fucking asshole. And I don't want yeah. hear anybody tell me about the same shit that happens with fucking um, WWE throwing money at guys and they, they fucking eat shit just to be yeah. a dickhead. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Honestly, they'd be like, word? I'm going over here. Uh, terrible segment, terrible segment. Reba, of course, doing the spa day. And then they fucking like, and then after hating on Tony Schiavone, they laugh with him and joke with him when they put cucumbers on his eyes. Like, fuck yo, honestly. Just absolutely atrocious. Um, uh, You there, bro? Yeah, no, I'm here. I'm... All right, cool. And then, um, which I'll, I'll speed through this match real quick because um, we got to go. But um, did you notice how John Moxley did the paradigm shift to Lance Archer in the first few seconds? And literally five <laughs> seconds later, Lance Archer was in control on offense. <laughs> you noticed that, right? <laughs> Bro, Moxley did the paradigm shift, and Lance Archer was on, like, Lance Archer was beating him up outside the ring in 10 seconds after he hit the paradigm shift. No selling like a motherfucker. No, no fucks he pulled, a shot, he pulled some dumb shit. Like, I saw that, and I was like, wait, did he just get hit with his finisher? What the fuck? What the fuck? What the fuck are we doing here? Yo, I felt dirty after watching this episode of Dynamite. I, I had to take a shower, son, honestly. This shit was just, it was terrible. Moxley wins. Eddie, Ar- um... Eddie Kingston and the, the 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 Lucha Bros or whatever the fuck the Butch and the Blade I don't fucking care beat up Moxley after we're getting Eddie Kingston versus Moxley as a main storyline now I'm happy to see it AEW Dynamite suck dick top to bottom is terrible <laughs> um, do you agree with me after redoing it that it's the worst Dynamite yet oh no yeah, I, no, no I guess I think I'm telling you the night the week before was fucking really bad man I'm telling you but yeah, but yeah. this one but this one is this, this one, yeah, top up and down. You know what? Yeah, you might be right because I think there was one or two matches that I, I were actually I, better than. Better there was not yet. one good match on this card this week. No, no, not one. So, and it's bad that we're comparing the worst match nights between two white weeks. It was just, it's just really sad. Um, let's go to SmackDown real quickly. As Triple H and Stephanie McMahon open the night, introducing new faces of SmackDown and how the brand looks with the new roster. Great to see that, but of course we get a random battle out of nowhere. A bunch of superstars beating each other up for no reason. Wrestling 101, ladies and gentlemen. If you're in a if you're in a group of people, you just beat the fuck out of each other for no reason. Well, you we gotta open um, up the season with uh, good ass whipping, so let's get everybody thrown in a fucking mix. Uh, yeah, you know, when we watched beat it, each other I said, for no reason. When we watched it, I said, Why are they doing that? I hate that. It, yeah, you said and I'm you said and I'm done. All right. <laughs> Like, He's like, and I'm done. Oh, come on. It's it's just, uh, it's, once again, lazy fucking booking. Lazy booking. Lazy lazy booking. Lars Sullivan defeats Jeff Hardy in the opening segment of SmackDown after the freak accident. Um, Vince McMahon loves big sweaty men, and Lars Sullivan, regardless of what he does outside the ring, will And be he's pushed. on two shows now. Yeah, he's on both. Um, actually, no, he was drafted to SmackDown. Oh, oh, okay. So, so he's officially on SmackDown now. He was drafted. He was drafted to... Um, um, Sullivan popped up from a twist of fate. Whatever, quick squash match. Lars Sullivan wins. Red after hearing the after hearing the allegations of Lars Sullivan. Do you think this man should still be pushed the way he is right now? Even, yeah, not, not. I'm not talking about in ring work, and I'm not talking about gimmick. I'm talking about like uh, morals in in here. What, what, what are you doing? Because there wasn't much of shit that happened a year ago. If you remember, not the gay porn. He did other shit too. No, no. <laughs> Why are you gonna penalize somebody for gay porn? I mean, that, that's uh, what, I'm, no. Because people think that's one of the reasons, and I'm like, you know, people think that's one of the reasons, and it's not. I think that like the racist, no, no, it's homophobic the racist, comments, the racist, homophobic comments, and then now the shit that they're talking about with the um the the, the, the I guess the masseuse or whatever the fuck she is. Um, yeah. Uh, I wish my job had so much. Fucking leniency when it comes to shit like this because seriously, really, seriously, get away I think shell the floor murder. and I wouldn't be fired. Exactly, it's like you get away with murder with this fucking company these days. But yeah, yeah. um, but then people who bust their ass get released. Good yeah, job. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It's true. Good job. Um, for the most part, uh, I don't know. I I I think that it's 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 a lot of a lot of things. I I, I that WWE could. They have the lawyers to look into shit and investigate and do this and this and that. So yep. if they, they if they continue to have him on the uh, on the on the screen, it's because they're they look into it. Yeah, they they're confident that they, they can move forward to it. But as a wrestler and a gimmick, I go to that. Nope. Get him the fuck out of here. I, they should release him. They should release him. He he makes no difference to me on the show. No, nothing. It's it's. But it's Vince boring. loves yo. Vince loves big sweaty men. It's pointless. What are they going to build to Lars versus fucking Braun? Oh, you can't do that now. 
No, they're probably they're probably gonna build to um Lars and fucking like Apollo or some shit. I don't know, some stupid shit. Whatever. I don't know. I have no idea. Um, but Lars Sullivan wins there. After that, we have the last match of the New Day together as a trio. Their farewell night on SmackDown was the New Day defeating Cesaro, Nakamura, and Sheamus. A quick The Bar reunion we had there, which was cool to see. Um, after hitting the midnight hour on Sheamus, um, it was a goodbye for the New Day. They, they finally split. Um, I thought the match was really good. There were some great spots there. I don't know if you, you watched that match, Red. Yeah, um... Very I enjoyed emo- it. Very emotional, man. It, um, yeah, and I really enjoyed the match, like, in-ring-wise. It was great. I love Little Bit Little Bit said, I'm not surprised Vince didn't have fucking Big E beat the shit out of both of them. <laughs> yeah, facts. I'm surprised. You can only hope. <laughs> it's I, I would, true, though. Because yeah, that's, that's Vince booking. He's like, we can't let, just let him walk away. Turn, turn. Um, the match was excellent. The spots were great. And the New Day got an emotional win. That was, pro- that was definitely a highlight of the night. After that, we had Daniel Bryan. Um, coming out, addressing his return to action. But then we have um, Seth Rollins um, coming out, saying that he's the new savior of SmackDown. Uh, Murphy appears, Mysterio and Dominic appear. It's a clusterfuck of people, ladies and gentlemen. But at the end, um, um, Murphy puts his hand out to shake hands with the Mysterios. The Mysterios do not buy it, but refusing to shake his hand at the end of this segment. Red, um, my boy at Royal Collectibles, Tommy said it perfectly. I, I saw I saw Rollins and Daniel Bryan in the ring and was like, yes! And then saw Ray and Dominic come out and go, no! <laughs> I thought this was over. As we say in uh, in the Spanish culture, we have our telenovela still going on. It's still yeah, happening. Novela. Our soap uh, opera still goes. Uh, as the Mexican turns, whatever it is, but it's just... <sighs> like you said, like you said earlier, listen, it's a, it's a shift of storyline. Hey, does it work on Raw? Uh, maybe not. It might work on SmackDown, though. We have different viewers on Fox. Yeah. Um, you know, you you know the immigrants love that Fox. Oh God. What? <laughs> <laughs> what? Uh, I told I told Tommy I'll tell you this. Rollins and Daniel Bryan in a program makes me want to cree myself. Okay, that that is a pairing of the gods. And I cannot wait to see them face each other in a legit prolonged feud. Do I care about um, the Mysterio story anymore? No, it's been too long. I loved what it was. It's time to move on. I think that the, I think what better what better fits is now you have um, the progression and the growth of Dominic. Like, yes, which I'm happy for. And and you sticking to the story actually kind of hurts him. On the long run, I th- I think it, I think it only helps Dominic. Everyone else is being ruined by it. I think he's the only one getting positive outlook. No, from you know it what? Because... Yeah, you know what? You're right. You're right. It it, it does help him, but it, yeah, you're right. It, it's the opposite. It ruins everybody else. And right. I think it helps Dominic because it's, it's it's making him become a man and face up to the person, the bully of the family, right. and everyone else is just being subject to bullshit from him. Right. Um. So we'll see where that goes. We had the Street Profits defeating Dolph Ziggler and Robert Roode via disqualification. Am I the only person who wants Ziggler and Roode to break up? Yeah, like honestly, I'm, I'm, uh, I mean, I'm, I, to be honest, I want to see if they could fucking sign James Storm and bring beer money. I want to see that's that. That's what I'm saying. I don't that's think they'll call I'm him saying. beer money though. They won't call him that shit. They they'll call him the the Rowling Rednecks. Um, so, uh, uh, what, uh, do, uh, dollars in um, fucking douche. I don't know what the fuck they're gonna call it. It'll be um, they, they can't they can't call him beer money. They, not, not only because of the impact, but because fucking uh, WWE is not gonna co-sign on that shit. Can't promote alcohol uh, yeah, right. on a TV on a program. Well, but apparently, you can run their I, commercials though. Yeah, I guess so. Uh, but if they do sign James Storm, he has to go with Bobby. Yeah, fuck, uh, fuck what all y'all heard. Yeah. Um, that's got to happen. Um, of course, this is going to be the feud Prophets and uh, Ziggler and Rue. That's going to be the progress um, project for the near future. And then finally, we had Bailey refusing to sign the contract for her Hell in a Cell match with Sasha Banks after a fiery promo by Banks, which by the way, Banks looked great this night. Um, Bailey shoves the contract across the table and said, I don't have to sign anything, which I'm still clenching and hoping that they save this for Mania, but I don't think it'll go that. I don't think they're going to wait that long. No, but if, if it does I'm go at- to Mania, it's because Banks um, gets the belt early on and they have to do a bigger build up for Mania with it. All right. Uh, I would, but, I would, hope, um, it, I would, I would three, hope it gets there. Top three heels of wrestling right now, and that's fucking Bailey. Yes, I agree. Bailey's up there. 100%. But we always She's... said it. I, I, we always said the fact that turn her heel. Yeah, but we were scared would... about it, though. It yeah, was a big yeah, risk. Yeah. But we always say, I, I always felt that you turn her heel, she'll tear it up. 
Yeah, it was a big risk though from yeah, from it, the it hugger was. from the hugger from the top merchandise seller on fucking yeah. WWE shop journey. He was a big risk, and, and I, I think, think she's still off. doing well merchandise wise. I think she's still no, I know, but uh, it, it it paid off. Yeah. It paid off. And finally, we got which by the way, um, cameos from Ric Flair not knowing how to use his phone in the Thunderdome, and then go <laughs> and we had, and we had Goldberg in the Thunderdome. He's, like, he's on his phone. He's like he's like um. How do I? How do I unmute myself? How do I? How do I send this? Uh, whoa! You don't send it, Rick. Rick, you don't. Don't send it, Rick. You don't send it. You're on a live stream right now. <laughs> <laughs> what? Uh, fuck. Um, and finally, Roman Reigns squashes Braun Strowman via submission to retain the Universal Championship. After the match, he beats up Braun with a steel chair, and Jay Uso. Does not stand for it. Jey Uso, Jey Uso comes out uh, and beats the shit out of Roman to end the night. That was SmackDown. Red, what do you thought about SmackDown? I think it was the best show of the week. Uh, uh, Compared to the other shit we've talked about? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, SmackDown had the best show. Um, I, I, I think that... Uh, yeah, but Butch Bother, because we didn't even talk about Impact. And, uh, wow. Impact oh, God. Impact is... Impact's another thing. It, you got AEW who's doing uh, fucking... Um, uh, SNL and fucking uh, 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 Impact is doing Mad TV. They, I don't, wow. I, I, I don't. I don't. I don't even fucking know what's going on over there as well. And I have so much, so much high hopes for that fucking promotion as well because you know they had they got decent um, storylines going, but then you also have a now a storyline where you're bringing back someone from the dead. Oh, <laughs> oh. Cool. Disney called. They want their storylines back. Hey, Haunted Mansion. Oh my God, we gotta bring back. Um, we gotta bring back the. And I don't even know how Scott Demore gets away with uh, or, or allows this shit. I don't get it. I don't. I don't know. I, I sometimes. I, sometimes I, I really think that wrestling just wants to be sketch comedy. They don't yep. want to be wrestling anymore. Yep. I don't know. But other than yep. that, yeah, SmackDown was the bigger show, which which is un- astonishing because we've given SmackDown shit for for weeks before, and now well, they stepped up to be the better show. Heyman yep. influence, Heyman influence. Exactly. Red, what were your who's your superstar of the week? Superstar of the week this week. <sighs> wow. Oof. Can I go first? Oh yeah, please do, please do. Nobody. Oh really? <laughs> Nobody. <laughs> Nobody. Um. No, I'm kidding. I have to say someone. So if I have to say someone, if I have to, because I'm not gonna give you guys a cheap. I'm not gonna fucking rip you off like that. I gotta give you someone. I would say nobody, but I will say somebody. Superstar of the week goes to um the new day this week. I um, I was gonna I I would go in agreement with you as well. I I have to say that because. For this Last night together was a trio. Great night, great match. And and and, I, and I actually, if I wanted to pull away from it, if I wanted to do separately, I would say Xavier Woods. He looks fucking great. Yep. And he in looked, shape, and in he shape, looked, and he and killed he, it. He killed it on both Raw and SmackDown. And he looked great in the ring as well. So he came, his bounce back from injuries. It's fucking amazing. It's great. Yeah, absolutely. But I wish I could say nobody, but I'll go New Day. Nah, nah, nah. It it, it, it was a good choice. So, uh, guys, thanks for chiming in and being a part of the episode this week. And as always. Here at Temple Tabloid, showing you guys much love and thanks for you guys for chiming in, downloading and sharing and being a part of the show. So uh, we'll check you guys next week as always because we're here every fucking week. Because why? Because we have nothing better to do. Shit, it's not like we vote! have lives. Uh. And also, vote, vote, vote. If you're in the United States, vote. You guys out there, vote. Even if you're across the globe, vote. If this is your time of season to vote, go out and vote. It's man. important. Go out and vote. So as always, Jada Santi with my boy Olski, guys. We are out. Take a bump. Check you guys later. Later. Turnbuckle tabloid. Three, two, one. Turnbuckle tabloid.